Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Harbor Site. This one is going to be dope. Today is my man Dustin Elliott, and a, also a fellow BJJ practitioner. Um, we're basically at the same level, getting our ass beat by everyone. That's right. <laughs> That's what it feels like, That's right? right? Yep. But Dustin, you are a divorce coach mm-hmm. or a men's coach for marriage and divorce. That's right. Man, what a freaking shit show our country is in with this stuff. Like, Truth. Could not be. I, I, I hope you get a ton of clients after this. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. <laughs> so anyways, man. So where do you, we were talking a little bit off camera. Where do you hail from? I hail. I hail from all over. <laughs> yeah. Um, legitimately. All over. Like, legitimately. Yeah. 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 Uh, born and raised overseas. Traveled a lot. Lived in eight, nine countries few different states and now i'm in myrtle beach when did you come back to this like the united states uh i moved back when i was 19 so i graduated high school in japan and then so you never even grew up in america as an american boy nope i'm just learning what it's like to be an american to be honest what a horrible time to learn (laughs) (laughs) yeah right (laughs) yeah (laughs) well this is not the way it's been you know (laughs) in the past but uh but anyway so so tell me a little bit about that so, um, growing up all over gave me huge insights. And then when I moved back I to the States, yeah, it's, a, it's a total, uh, I think it's a big thing. Sorry to cut you off, but good. it's a big thing with the military mm-hmm. is like guys that are, you know, are served in the military and they like see the world. You come back here and man, you appreciate things so much better. Differently. Different. Yeah, differently. Yeah. For me, it's yeah. differently. Yeah. So, and, and to speak on that too, I did live on military bases. So I wasn't like when I lived in Japan, I did live in a Japanese house, but all my friends were We're mostly American. Iwakuni. Oh yeah. It's a Marine base. Yeah. I was, uh, I did three years in Okinawa. Yeah. 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 I went down there once. It was diving or just whatever. Diving? Yeah. No, it was for, it was something for school. Oh, model United Nations. I represented Ethiopia and got a free trip because nobody cares about (laughs) Ethiopia and model United Nations. In Japan. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, I graduated, um, moved to the States. I moved to the States because I wanted to play college football. That was my little kid dream. Okay. Um, did that. Went to Minnesota my first year. It was too cold, so I moved to Los Angeles. And then uh, college and everything else from there. So tell, what countries did you grow, Did you live in? Uh, Panama, all through elementary school. Okay. Japan in high school. Um, Italy in college, on and off. Um, and then I played professional football in Germany. And you were actually born in Greece. Born in Greece. Yeah, he was actually yeah. born in Peloponnese. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, down in Kalamata. Co- close yep. to Kalamata. Yep. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. Oh man, Greece, my the best, my, my heart. That's right. That's where we'll we sell Johnny Slicks. It's we're probably out. We're probably gone for a good six months to a year. What do you say, babe? Like back and forth every six months. To yeah. A year. <laughs> yeah. Spend the summers over there. All right. So then you come back here and uh, and you come back to the States, you go to college and mm-hmm. or finish up college and then come here. Yeah. Well, so the whole the whole idea was playing football. Like I went to college to play football. Let's keep it real. I didn't yeah. care about studying. Um, and it's a waste of money. <laughs> college. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is. It definitely is. I'm going to go on a limb right now and make that yep. statement. Public. It is. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and then. Uh, my dream as a kid was to play NFL Europe. It went away in mm-hmm. 2005, 2006. So then um, I just decided that I still wanted to keep playing football. And I went back and forth from the States to Germany playing. And then once in arena too. So I played arena football once as well. So they have like like American style football in yep. over there? Really? Yes, sir. Yeah. People like it? Yep. So mm-hmm. when, yeah, so when the NFL Europe was there, it was all over Europe. And then it slowly dwindled and fell into Germany because they had the most fans, finance, yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then when NFL Europe went away, well, there was equipment and fans and referees and everything like that. So the Germans just picked it up. And that's theirs. And they call it the GFL. What? Yeah. And now they're sending players to the league. That's dope. Yeah. So I so, played there three years. So do you, you like it? So what was your size then? Well, smaller, a little bit smaller. You were smaller then? Yeah. What were you doing? Wide receiver. Okay. Yeah, I was a wide receiver. So fast. you're, fa- so you're fast. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was. It was. Yeah. Right. Now I do everything on my back. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to lay down here and right. fight you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I don't have to run anymore. Yeah. Um, no, no, no. It's okay. Just lay on top of me. That's right. I, I, I got it from here. That's right. Yeah. Come <laughs> yeah. on in. Come, come on, on in. in. <laughs> come on and get close. <laughs> um, that's awesome, man. So, and then you you finished that and then you're basically in the States now. So now I'm in the States. Yeah. Okay. So then, so I was in California. Um, I was just working, living life. And then I moved to North Carolina, uh, in 2010. Um, just getting into the, you know, like the American dream, the job, the career yeah, life. Right. Yeah. Um, then to bring it all around, met my then ex wife, got married, uh, moved into Myrtle beach and then, that's where I'm at now. So, yeah. So, where'd you meet your wife? We met at church. Okay. Yeah. I had just came back from in North Carolina. In North Carolina. Okay. Yeah. So, actually, when I was in North Carolina in 2012, the first team I played football for called me and they were like, hey, we need a wide receiver. Um, are you interested? I was like, I wasn't doing anything like that great, you know, in North Carolina. So, I went. And when I came back, that's when we met. How old were you? We met when I was 29. Oh, and really? I got married when I was 30. So you weren't a kid? No. Yeah. I mean, mentally, probably I was still a kid. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, but, now knowing what you know now. Yeah, yeah. Mentally. I got married at 19. I think it was, I think it was, yeah, 19, straight yeah. out of boot camp. 19. Yeah, there's years no way old. I could have done that. Do you, you know, professionally, do you recommend someone get married at, a male get married at 19 years old? I think, uh, I'm not going to recommend someone not if they think that that's what they want to do, but I don't think you know what you want out of life when you're 19. That's a good statement right there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to discourage anyone. I think, you know, if you're going to get married that young, I mean, I don't, I don't think that it's not going to work. I mean, generations passed, it did. Yeah, of course. Right. Yeah. But I think that, um, you, you have to know going in, you're not going to be the same person in five years and 10 years, yeah. especially as a guy, you know, you're still learning right. who you are at 19. You're a child. We say that all the time. Kind you're, of. you're a man. You're a man child. Yeah. yeah. You just you're a man infant. People used to say man to me. Infant. <laughs> <laughs> people used to say to me when I was, you know, 18, 19, I was engaged and people used to say, well, you're just, you're going to change so much. And I remember resenting that. I was like, no, like you don't know me. I'm not going to turn into a different person. But what they meant wasn't that I was going to like suddenly not be into my husband anymore and be, you know, this other person. It meant like we were going to grow up. And we were going to be di interested in different things as we got older. Yeah. And, and if you don't go in the same direction, you're you're not. Like if you don't go in the same direction, you're going in a different direction. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so my my lovely wife, my beautiful lovely wife, the mother of my child and and soon to be second child, no four, fourth child. Um, <laughs> that we know about. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, <Dickies>. babe! <laughs> I just said beautiful. I said Aww. all these nice things. <laughs> Uh, anyway, she's been married three times. Cha ching Third time's charm. What? <laughs> <laughs> winner. Winner, what, does winner. That, what does that mean about me then? <laughs> that you're oh that your second time is a charm. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. You are the charm. Right. You are the third the charm. charm. Yeah, yeah. Um but you were nineteen as well, right? I was nineteen when I got married. Yep. Okay. The first time. Yeah. And that was a very heavily religious influence, right. if you will. I think a lot of times it is. Yeah. For that youth, I, I think back in the day, it, it wasn't had, for me. It had more to do with like convenience and like building families when you were young and like working a farm together for you know twelve hours a day. Sure, yeah. But yeah, now definitely, I don't know why you'd get married at nineteen unless you your family was like pushing you to. Yeah, I don't know. Abstain, abstain from sex <laughs> until yeah. you're married or something. <laughs> yeah, that's that's kind of gone out the door too. You know, the whole yeah. sex before marriage and that kind of thing. It's like yeah. it's, all I'm that's sure, thrown to the wayside. I'm sure know? it's there in, in a very sec, subsect group of people. Cir Cir subsect for sure. Yeah, small group. Yeah. Well, all right. So you so talk to me about before we get into, I guess what you do mm -hmm. or how you got into doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Um. What was your upbringing like? Like, what was your mom and dad? So, like? yeah. So, it's interesting traveling around, traveling around the way we did and moving around. It was the core four of us. So, my mom, my dad, my brother, and myself. Okay. How old's um, your, your brother? Or what's the age difference? Uh, two years. Two years. So, so you guys were close. 
Yeah, close. Yeah. yeah, close enough to like get along, and then also close enough to not get along. Yeah, beat the living shit out of each other. Yeah, that was much. me and my brother. Yeah, He's two and a half years, and we were like thick as thieves, but we also. Like there's some times I'm like I think I just really hurt my brother. Like, yeah. Really bad. yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, and the thing is, we've never actually punched each other like in the head or anything. <laughs> yeah. So we haven't ever done that yet. But we yelled a lot. Yet. <laughs> I like how you say yet. <laughs> We're still both breathing. We're still both alive. <laughs> yeah. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So we were like very cohesive. Um. And uh, like like when I was in Panama, I mean, we're the same age for the most part, right? Yeah. So, um. You know the invasion of Panama? Yeah. All that? I was yeah. there for that. I was a kid. So I was first grade waking up to like all that. And I've been in crossfires and I've been in some crazy situations as a civilian dependent whatever. But America had no part in that whatsoever, by the way. No, no. Yeah, we weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. On the, on the record, America wasn't there. Um, but the, that created just such a cohesiveness because it was like the four of us yeah. going all over the place. Then I went off to college. Um, and then, and then when I was 26, maybe 26, 27, my parents got divorced after like 25 really? years of marriage. Yeah. So that, whoa. Yeah. Like I was living in Pasadena at the time and I got a call from my mom and dad and they were like, Hey, are you sitting down? Like literally they said, are you sitting down? And I'm they like, both called you together. They were like together on the phone. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, they're like, Hey, we're getting a divorce. And I was like, okay. And it, that wrecked my whole world. Like. I became very reckless then in my mid twenties. Um, because of that, yeah, because because the cohesiveness that we had was gone. So the, the whole found, the, your foundation was no more. Yeah, you know. So then, um, in my mid twenties, I had to work through uh, what div- what divorce was for the people that had to experience it um, as collateral damage. Yeah, you know. Um, got through that and finally was able to like open up to the idea of marriage. I hated marriage for a while because I hated divorce. You know what I mean? Um, Do they give you a reason? Not really. So then I also had to learn like my own closure too. Uh You know what I mean? So I had to like figure out. It wasn't this thing like dad or mom did this thing. So it's like clear. No, it was like a culmination of, who know like I and yeah I got to the point where I kind of stopped digging I just like I whatever I'm not getting anywhere I'm not getting anything enough for personal closure so yeah, yeah. you just have to learn to accept it and kind of like gear on and move on yeah. kind of thing so um but I grew up in a in a two-family household so there's values I guess there's values and there's but still that's a, probably why it rocked you even more <clears throat> Yeah, it might have been. You know what it I mean? might have been. Because you like you have this like solid great foundation. You guys traveled the world. You have this just crazy your, your, life experiences. These, yeah. This tribe of individuals that you shared this whole life with. Yep. And then you just get a ran which you in my in my mind, it's like that is always there, right? That foundation. Even though I'm running around trying to live my life, sure. That foundation is there. I could always rely on that. Right. And it was for me. Yeah. It was. So like when I moved to the States at nineteen, it's like any other non-American moving to the States. Like, yes, I spoke the language. Yeah. Yes, I look American. But I, to this day, I still don't think always like an American thing. Right. I think very European and yeah. whatever. So, yeah, even then I relied on them for that foundation of, you know what I mean? To yeah. refer back to. So, yeah. yeah. So if life goes crazy. I could call. There, there's this foundation that I've that's been built upon my whole life. Right. And, and now it's gone. Right. And yeah. even in college, so like when I lived in Italy, um, I was there every summer and Christmas. So I would go back from college to Italy and I'd yeah. be there during the summers for three months or Christmas for a couple months, whatever. Like when I was in college. Yeah. So, yeah. So then when that get pulled from underneath you, you know, here Ooh. I am this like in mid 20s. What are you still? What, what are we a man now? I don't <laughs> think so. Like, you know what I mean? And trying, yeah, trying, yeah, ish, yeah. 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 Um, and that was around, I don't even know when that was, maybe 2008. So then it was like a weird time in America because it was a recession. So it was just like hard for everyone. And then there was that. And I built my, I built my house in 2007. Yeah. And then job. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Real good job. And then the next year I was like, Oh, sad me. Yeah. But it's all good. Yeah. So I've experienced uh, I've experienced divorce now on two different sides of it, and w- I think one of the most um, 
frustrating things was I was so motivated when I got married to not get divorced. Well, I, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, sure. everybody is for sure. sure. Like no one's like, I'm going to get into this to get divorced later. Like no yeah. one says that. Right. Yeah. But I, but it was I, like a conscious thing. Like very conscious. Like I'm yeah. gonna, I have a, I have a point to prove. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent. Like I'm not going to do what my parents did. I'm not going to do that. And my ex-wife then also came from a divorce home too. So we both were on the same page. Well, that's, that's a good start. It is, but then I, when I look back and I start, and I understand now what I understand about the mind, mm-hmm. you know, like what you focus on, you attract, and what you focus on, you bring to you. Yeah. And if you're focusing on not getting divorced, you're still focusing on divorce. Don't think <laughs> about the big purple elephant. Yeah. I just saw one. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. 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 It's that. It's that. So yeah. in retrospect, um, I would think so many things differently. Like if and when, when and if I do get married again, um, my thoughts be so different. Yeah. So different. Wow. Yeah. I'm just, I'm like pondering. I mean, I grew up in a single, I guess not. Uh, my mom got married. Oh man. She's going to, I hope she doesn't listen to this. <laughs> I think it was like four times. Earmuffs. Earmuffs. I don't know. It wasn't as much as my aunt. I know that, <laughs> but we, we had, we had some, some rocky, uh, you know, marriages through, you know, my mom growing up, but, um, mainly it was just us. It was just us. So I don't have that kind of, I don't know what you would call it. That like, uh, that foundation, that picture like perfect family cohesive. Fa- yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Mine yeah. was a very unconventional gypsy lifestyle, which made it, made me, made it work in the military. Yeah, for but sure. It, but it also made me go the hardcore opposite in my adult life. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's kind of like what you were talking about. Like, hardcore family, you know, cohesive yeah. unit right. trying to be anyway with being a man child. Um, well, but, your, you know. your mom even says, and your dad, like you, because they were divorced was so young and you didn't want that. Like you wanted a family immediately. That's yeah. why you guys yeah, started. I think, that's, so, I think yeah. that's why I got married. So, so young. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's, but that kind of goes to show that like what people are bringing into a marriage, like you're bringing it. Yeah. It's and and that's that's one of the big things about this work is understanding what you're bringing in, what you're carrying, and what you need to let go of. And if yeah, most people are probably too, not letting go of much, especially <laughs> guys. We don't yeah. let go of anything. We just press it down. <laughs> yeah, bring it all in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't let anything go. So you got married at 29, mm-hmm. and no, then married around a 30. Like 30? we started dating 29, okay. and then married at 30. And then how long did you guys? We were married for six years. Okay. Yeah, and then there wasn't there wasn't this thing like it was kind of like my parents' divorce to be honest. It was like a culmination. Like we just kind of stopped getting along, hit that five, six, seven year. You know how they say right. there's like that that yeah. speed bump that comes that everyone's like anticipating, which I also think is a problem. <laughs> um, and then we just kind of stopped getting along, started fighting a lot, and she decided that she wanted to separate, and I didn't think it was a good idea, and then. You know, in the state of South Carolina, you have to be separated for an entire year. Yeah, same in North Carolina, yeah. Yep. So during that separation, um, we just never worked it out. And she decided that she wanted the divorce. So that was that. And, like, my divorce was relatively smooth. Um, I pretty much put it all on her. I was like, if you want a divorce, like, you're doing everything because I don't I don't want this. I don't want this, nor yeah. do I want to deal with it. Right, yeah, yeah 100%. So, yeah. and because it was... There was no, there was nothing to point fingers at and say like, this is the why it kind of, you know, was smooth. So what's crazy is I've even, I've talked to a bunch of people that obviously divorce is rampant now, you know, yeah, it's, compared it's comparatively. High. Yeah. Yep. So it's crazy to me is no matter whether kids are involved or not involved, no matter how amicable it is. It's still super fucking painful. 100%. It's a death. It, right. That, I think you said that. Yeah. yeah it's like... It, 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 it is. It's a death. It's a death. Yeah. Why? It's a death from... I was just telling someone this the other day. Because they were like, yeah, I'm in this relationship. And I'm like, yeah, but it's not marriage, bro. Like, it's different. You know, so when you're married... Everything starts out great. There's seasons, right? Like it's yeah. the honeymoon phase, but then you're starting life goals and um, you start to set a direction for your life and start steering a course of where you want to go and how you see it and, yeah. the, you know, all of these things. So then when that, when that ends, 
it's you, you, you have to unvision, you have to like reset, you have to, your whole life that you were planning is gone. Yeah. So then there's that, that morning of what you thought was going on. Not to mention like the day to day course of action, right? Like you wake up next to somebody, you go to sleep with somebody. This person. Yeah. This I sh- person. I share my life with. Yeah. yeah. Like it's gone. So yeah. your life is, you know, it's a reason why it says you become one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're one. So. When you lose that part, you have to mourn it. You have to grieve it literally like a death. Did you I'm, I'm put my wife on the spot? Because I know all I know all of her dirty details. But did even though your divorces were like, you know, at least one of them were very was very uh, dramatic. They were both pretty dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> did. Uh, even though that you wanted it right and it was good that it ended, was there like a uh, like a feeling of like you're used to that person being in your life or that friend being there and then they're not there anymore? A hundred percent. I even definitely though think the like first one the was bad stuff. Like, the, yes, the first one was abusive and so it was a lot easier for me to like escape from like okay and separate and go like this needed to end. Right, but, but even with that, like per, per, that, and that's one of the one I'm really curious about. Like, even with the one that was abusive, does did it feel like I didn't have that person in my life anymore, or was it kind of like I got to get out of here? There was a I'm lot better. of relief, but I think ultimately it was more guilt than like missing him. I didn't miss him, but I felt like there were times I felt like I needed to reach out because I felt guilty and I felt like you know. There was some of this because you left because I left and he had so many issues. And so I felt like drawn to like I felt sorry for him. So I felt like bad and I I didn't miss him, but I felt like I needed to be there for him, if that makes any sense. The second one, it was like I wanted out so bad, but I missed him all the time. Yeah. Yeah. That normal. (laughs) Or is she just super messed up? (laughs) No, no. You know what? I don't know. And uh, because I'm still kind of new to it. So let, like kind of like talking about my coaching business, right? Yeah. Just not to shift gears, but like yeah. I've just recently shifted into actual divorce coaching. So yeah. now I'm like all in on learning. So there's still so many things that I don't have any idea about. You know, because I, mean? I, I would think that in a, in a, in a, you know, in a, you know, if you take away all the bad stuff, right? My thought is you share this life with this person, good, bad or indifferent. It doesn't matter. So many you, memories. You know, yeah. Yeah. You, 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 like you said, like you go to bed with them, you wake up with them, you, you do your course of action, your daily life, whether it's like good or bad or, you know, romantic or not romantic, it doesn't you matter. You share the same toothpaste bottle. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? There's one like, bottle there. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's, it's, it's the, per, it's your person. Yeah. It's your person. You know, not yeah. separate from sex and separate from all that. That's right. your person. Yep. So when that, when that, even if it does need to end, even if you sat down with the counselor and the counselor's like, yeah, you guys should probably not be married. Right. You know, and that person's no longer there and you're alone, even for a, a period of time, I would imagine that's still very difficult and it's something that you have to kind of wrap your head around. I think that's part of the reason why people end up staying together or getting back together. Because of the fear. Because just just the comfortability. It's more comfortable. It's cheaper to keep her. It's come more comfortable to stay. So it's like, because when you're getting yourself out there and giving up everything, it's like you lost Right. Yeah. So it's like yeah. starting over is so challenging. So you have to determine how bad you want to do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, you do. And let me say this, too. Like, uh, since we're talking about this, like, I don't have bad words for my ex-wife, too. Let me just put that on the record. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. No, but I don't. Like, she's a great person. It just didn't work out. Like, and I don't. If you can put a pinpoint on it, I don't exactly know why. We both failed. Like, I'm not going to say, like, oh, I was this shining, like rock star well that's all it takes like, two to tango yeah, yeah. like I'm, i wasn't a rock star husband all the time like yeah. let's keep it real you yeah. know what i mean i made a lot of mistakes a lot did a lot of stupid things but you know i just wanted to say that like i don't I, you know for her you're good yeah lady you're all right <laughs> um but this gives us this gives us like it, without that it, it it you don't have a story to tell you don't have any experience this is all this is the journey it is you know this is whether you ask for it or not, it just it, it, it is. It, it's it is. what it is. Yep. It's your it's your journey, your life. That's right. And you have to make the you know you get to choose. This is what's great about life. You get to choose your outcome. Everything. 
Like it's your choice. Whether you make a good choice or bad choice, it's yours and you have to own it and you move you move forward from it. That's right. You know. So anyways, all right. So you're you get um you get divorced. Mm-hmm. How old were you? It was like two and a half years ago, two years ago. So what am I now? Thirty eight? So I was thirty six. Did it like for I mean, obviously for you to to do what you're doing now, I mean it had to make an impact on you. The divorce? Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. It was um because what I was building in my mind was that cohesiveness that I had as a kid. Yeah. So now here I was experiencing it oh, again. Oh, so you're painting a you painted a picture for yeah, yourself. Of course. Yeah. We I mean, we all do, right? We all yeah. have like this vision of what we want, right? And then uh, in comes attachments, and in comes or the expectations and attachments mm-hmm. and all these things, which are horrible to yeah. have. You know, we can get into that later if you want, like expectations. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And attachment yeah, and we, we need to. Stuff. Yeah. Yeah, but. So yeah, of course. Like so, then when it all fell apart, it's like, dang, kind of been here before, but now I'm on the other side. Like I'm, I'm on the. Did you call your mom and dad? Uh, not immediately. No, no. You it was wanna... my business, kind of like. Yeah. And there was so it, when she, when when I got separated, it wasn't a divorce yet. You know what I mean? So yeah, but I mean, when the divorce happened. Yeah, I don't remember when exactly, but I did. What did they say? Um. Let's see. What did my mom say? My dad was kind of hard to get a hold of because he was in Italy, like totally off the grid, teaching English, <laughs> like just doing his thing. You know, he lives here now. Um, my mom said, uh, I don't exactly remember, to be honest. She like, like life goes on. Like, it's OK. Yeah. You know, like you're going to be all right. It, very just comforting. You know, like mom stuff. Like mom she gave stuff. me a digital hug over the phone. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Yeah. yeah. One of those kind of things. Yeah, man. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, so I did I did uh, 12 years, and by no means was I a great husband at all whatsoever, but I definitely had this intent based off, like, what she said, like, you know, not growing up in a real... I don't want to... I guess it... I don't know. Would you call my growing up a stable home? I mean, it's just broken pe- home. It wasn't... Your mom's a great lady. I had a, people, I had a lot of people that loved me. I had a lot of people that loved you. Just a broken yeah. home. Yeah. Grew up without your dad. Yeah. An abusive, abusive stepfather for, at, at times, um, w- which was a whole, that's a whole separate thing. Um, but you felt like the need to create your own family quickly. Yeah. And, ha- and create that foundation. And, um, and, and you can't go, I can't go back because it gave me my beautiful daughters mm-hmm. and, and, and a life of, of experiences. But, um, there was just this, like, I felt so, I got out of the military and a lot of that probably had to do with the transition, but I felt so trapped and out of 12 years, I was gone six. Yeah. Because of duties and different things. Deployments. Right? Yeah. Deployments. And stuff. It was like yeah. wartime. So he right. was gone. Yeah. From 2000 to 2012, right. out, out of those 12 years, I was gone six. How the fuck do you like carry on a relationship? You can't. I mean, so I, I never served, right? So respect to everyone that does for sure. But growing up around military bases and then having a lot of friends in the military, it's pretty safe to say that the military doesn't breed healthy relationships. I mean, I, I just don't like. There was times that I would it's leave for difficult. nine months, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, and early on in, in in the 2000s, like internet and social media isn't what it is today. Yeah. So there was no hardly any communication, communication. whatsoever. And like, yeah, what do you, how, how, that, how do, do you, you, like you nine months at a time, you're like turning into different people, mm-hmm. you know, it's yeah. not conducive. No, it's not. I do have my business it's partner, not. Josh, he, him and his uh, wife made it through. Um, and there are a lot of people that do too. So, let's, but, it, let's, but it wasn't without any bumps. They for sure, they went through some bumps, but I think that this is my opinion. They were synced up with their direction. And who they were as people. Mm-hmm. And that was not what I had. We were two totally different belief structures. Yeah. Two totally different uh, thoughts on how to raise kids. Like pretty much polar op- op- opposites, opposites on, yeah. on most majority of decisions. Mm. Which now I'm out of the military. I'm, in, I'm getting into my 30. I'm, I'm turning, you know, I think I was, I was through 30. I don't know. <laughs> I wasn't there. 30. <laughs> You're supposed to remember these things, babe. I don't remember um, when. I know you got out at when at 2012. Yeah. So right, whatever, however I was that 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 time, 
Um, it was, uh, man, I just felt super like there's no way this is my life. Mm. While you were married still? Yeah. 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 And I was out and it was just like, no, I can't, can't do it. And I felt so trapped. And so, Mm. yeah. You know, I think to just speak on that though, like this is the, this is the complicated part of it, right? Mm. Everybody's situation is different. Mm -hmm. Like there's no exact because we're all imperfect people trying to make something perfect work. Like, yeah. You know? But I think that the, um, this is, this is what we actually just did. Her and I just did a podcast and we talked quickly about, I don't know if you caught that clip a little bit about reception, about, uh, relationships mm-hmm. and how important it is to find the right, the person that this is just my opinion, that, but not, definitely not a professional one, but the, the, the person that aligns with your morals and goals. I agree. Because like with her, like when we met, it was just like we were, granted we had <laughs> we had a lot of fun initially and we kind of changed. <laughs> we kind of changed a But we, but we a grew lot. in the same direction. Yeah, we grew. Time. And that we, was kind of like what we just said. It was like the culprit. Like coming, we were we were going through adult adolescence. We were both coming out of marriages. We He mm-hmm. was still in a military transition. Stuff was like not a great time. So mm-hmm. like you can say whatever you want to say about like, you know, relationships and waiting for the right time. But sometimes they don't happen at the right time. So mm-hmm. then it's like we kind of got lucky to an extent that we, we synced up and we were like so but, compatible. But at the core, I think we had, our, we, we agreed on the same moral stances. We agreed on life in general. Mm-hmm. We were just being wild, wild, <laughs> wild yeah. now. Yeah. Well, I think, I think now too, see, I'm on the other side of that too. And as I'm like starting to flirt with the idea of dating again, I, the biggest thing that I've experienced is, I think everyone's looking for that, but people don't know how anymore. Yeah. Man, the scene's crazy right now. Like, dating scene, like, it's like everyone's lost their I'm mind. sorry for like, you. <laughs> I'm so sorry for you. It's, I can't even imagine having to deal with that. Well, and I haven't even, like, I'm tippy-toeing. I'm not even all the way in yet. Like, Seems super stressful. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, it's bonkers. So, like, to find that's even, what a blessing that is to even find that. that yeah. You know what I'm saying? That alignment, because... I think that that alignment. Well, you'll have to go. You'll have to go back and look at that episode. She actually laid a trap for me. It was very well. It was like it was like (laughs) (laughs) it was cookie crumbs down the thing. She knew that I like cookies, and then she laid them out. And there was a there was a net, and it got me. Smart. Yeah, right? Not, yeah, not on your part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was a dummy. I was just like I'll cookie. Eat those I'll eat those cookies. <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyways, all right. So what was the greatest thing you had to overcome? In life in general or just about divorce? You could say, let's just start with good life in general and then we'll go to divorce. Honestly, it, there's two things that come to, to mind. Is Honestly, the divorce is one of the biggest things I had to overcome. Uh, my parents' divorce and then moving to the States and like kind of being in a country all by myself. Yeah. So that was like different. Yeah. So, the, so go, let's go back to the divorce then. We'll stay on track with your business. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the biggest thing for me. Did you move out? No, she like, didn't. She did. Because I said, I'm not going anywhere. Like, I don't this want my, this. Yeah. yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't put my foot down like that, you know, like hyper masculine, like, this is my house. Like, I didn't do that. I yeah. just said, I don't want this. So if you want to leave, I'm not going to stop you. Like, leave then. But yeah. I'm not. But I'm not going anywhere. Still hurt, though. Of course. Yeah. yeah I was broken, man. Of course. So did did you have any sort of negative feedback loop kind of things that you created? How do you mean? What Drug. were you telling yourself? What yeah, were drugs, you? alcohol, women. Um. Oh, the dark, the dark road. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Like what? What was the repercussion of feeling that having those feelings and getting hurt like that? You know what well, the truth is is like because us guys are not taught how to process our emotions. When you go through something that extreme, you don't know what to do. So you just you just lash out at life. Because masculine men can't be sad, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a podcast. You can't see me quoting, right? No, we're going to be on YouTube. You'll see. That's you right. Yeah, yeah. You look right there. And yeah. Quote. Yeah. Um, no, but we're not taught. Yeah, I mean, well, and, and it's, it's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. It is 100%. Yeah. I, yeah. It is 100% because we're human. We have emotions. And so when you don't know how to process that kind of stuff... I was just talking to one of my clients and 
you can go down the dark road or you can go down the hyper successful road, but either way, they're just distractions. Mm-hmm. Um, I've experienced both. The first road I went down yeah, was so the dark I, road. Yeah. Drinking a lot, like going to strip clubs, like that kind of thing. So you did it. Yeah. You did the, you did the typical. I, yeah. Yeah. You, you do the typical guy thing. Like, and I wasn't like hooking up and stuff, but I was like at strip clubs. That was like enough for me, I guess. Yeah. Um, but drinking a lot, like almost got a DUI. Um, and you know what's crazy is I've only told like two people this too. So now the whole world knows. And I'm okay with it because people need to know that like there's the dark road. It's okay for a moment because we don't know how to process, but you can't stay there. You don't, don't, uh, my, my, my uh, good friend Kirk Weiser says, don't build a house there. No, not don't, at don't all. Don't pitch a tent there. Not at all. It's but okay if- to go through it. It is. But don't live there. Right. And yeah. and I, and by no means am I condoning, like, yeah, go be a, an asshole. Like, I'm not saying that. But, yeah. like, if you're going down that road because it's one of the two options, like... Get out of it. Get out of it. Yeah. Recognize it. And so yeah. one day for me, I just kind of woke up and was like, dude, do you want to, like, die? And not, like, literally die, but just, like, do you want to be that dude that's... We, we all know that dude that's, like, totally broken, like, totally self-destructive, like, yeah. always making bad decisions... He's stuck in a job that he doesn't want or whatever. And I I just said, no, that's not what I want anymore. We uh, we talk about this on the podcast. I, f- I feel like it's like every podcast that gets brought up. But this this idea of searching for pleasure mm. versus purpose. And obviously you're hurt, right? So mm. there's this hole in mm. your being that you're trying to fulfill with typically men is women, drugs, and alcohol. 100%. You, in the, like in in that order, <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. And the problem with that is it is a fucking sinkhole, and you can it never fill it. Like, You'll never be satisfied with it. Never be satisfied. So you will just constantly be seeking pleasure, mm. and it, it will take you nowhere but deeper down the hole. Yeah, and yeah. you don't want to be that guy. So I, I woke up and said, like, I asked myself, do you want to be that guy or do you want to like go live an did amazing something life. happen or did, did you just kind of like wake up one day and go what the fuck Dustin it was that I just woke up and I was like what are you doing man like this isn't you this isn't how you were raised like so then I look back on my the rest of my life like I played professional football for four years I have championships I'm a collegiate athlete like I crossfitted I went to regionals like I, I'm like what are you fucking doing man like <laughs> this isn't you right you know what I mean? Like yeah, that's you not just didn't, that, you looked in the mirror and didn't recognize yourself. Yeah, yeah, like something just clicked and it was that. And yeah. so I said, you're just made for more. Like, you know, and I also coached high school football for a few years, too. And I'm like, dude, you're not that guy. Like you wouldn't be that guy to those kids. Like that's not. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? So so then I started shifting and redirecting my focus. And um, at the time, what were you doing for a career? Construction. Okay. Yeah, construction. And learning a lot about real estate. So that's that's one of the other things that I do right now too, which is a lot of fun because now it's like like how are you just saying we, we seek to fill the, the pleasure. Well now I'm finding like satisfaction in serving and like building a new empire. Like purpose. Yeah, man. That's where you f- that's where you fill the void. That's where you're it's constantly not even, Yeah, and it's not even filling a void, it's like becoming whole. Yeah. I mean I guess that's the same thing. Filling the void, <laughs> becoming whole. <laughs> But, I like the way you worded it, though. Yeah, but, but I, because I, it is different. I know what you're saying. It's like it's not like you're trying to like, fi- like fix something, but it, but being purpose driven, you just get so much more true pleasure and true satisfaction out of that. Like you feel fill, filled up. Yeah, and like yeah. metaphorically, it's like yeah. filling a hole versus planting a tree. Yeah, like it's the same soil, right. but you're doing something different. Right. So it is it is different, you know. Yeah. So so now now I'm on that track, and then so. Um, I started working with a business coach. Um, it's one of the smartest things you probably ever did. It was definitely this. And you know what's crazy? And I'm not blaming anybody, but when I was married, I wanted to work with this same guy, and the decision of the household was no. Fucking, fucking women. Dude, <laughs> things would have been so different. I, I can't say things would have been different, but I know I would have grown differently as a man. It's it was It's been great for me. I mean, I've, I had a, I've got a business coach as well, and... I mean, it's just not even, it doesn't even have to necessarily be about business. It's just about my own brain and my own thoughts. Well, cause it, it, thoughts. it ends up not being about business. It's about your mind. Yeah. That'd be right. And, it and doesn't matter the topic. Like, like if you, if I can sit here and tell people right now, if like, if you want personal growth, if you want to grow in your life and be more successful, whatever that is, go find a freaking coach. Absolutely. Invest in yourself. We spend so much money on 
bullshit. Mm -hmm. Consuming. Consuming, but yeah. then we won't spend money on something that's 100% for us. 100%. On You're developing, right. developing yourself. Yeah. And growth. Like if you want, like I've got, we've got um, a health and fitness coach. Mm -hmm. We have a health and fitness company. Mm -hmm. We coach people, yeah. but we have our own coaches. Yeah. And we have a business coach. Why? Because these are things that I want to improve in. I want to sure make you... my relationship better. I want to yeah. make my business better. So guess what I do? I go get somebody smarter than me or even somebody that's as smart as me. that's just going to hold me accountable and make sure that I'm well, you doing know, the things I'm supposed to be doing. Well, that's one of the things is like a good coach doesn't necessarily have to be smarter than you. Like the way I, the way I, <laughs> they're just not your friend necessarily. Yeah. Well, what yeah. I, one of the analogies I use with a lot of clients is the peanut butter can't see the label from inside of the jar. Right. Like I don't have this. I don't have to know about your business to help you change your business because you're going to be the one that changes it, not me. Yeah, and that's why I started. I started with as a business coach. I started doing just like life coaching for men, and then I started talking to some friends of mine, um, also in jujitsu, who were going through a divorce. And I started realizing, like, man, they're they're going the same, going through the same things I went through. And um, then I started looking into it, and I realized, like, I did literally this is what I did. I went on Instagram, I typed in divorce coach, and started scrolling. I didn't see a single dude. And I'm like, wait a minute. Like, this is not good. Yeah. So I, I, I redirected. I refocused my there's, whole. There's not any. There's hardly any male divorce coaches. Pull, you can pull it up on Instagram now. Type in divorce coach. Hopefully I pop up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, there's like none. There's a cut. I mean, there was like two, but they weren't active. So it wasn't. Yeah. Like if you if you click on like one of the women's profiles, she'll have. X amount of followers and just putting out awesome content and writing books and yeah. holding group chats and all these kinds of things. And when I started looking for resources for men other than women doing it, I couldn't find men coaching men. So I'm like, wait a minute, like someone needs to be that guy. Well, that's a, this is a, a systemic problem in our, in our nation right now. I agree. I mean, it hasn't, it's not right now. It's, it's been ongoing and it's, it's a snowball effect that's continuing to go on. Agreed. Yeah. Which is the reason probably why we have more divorces and the reasons why, you know. It's I was pulling up some of these uh, statistics for the U.S. Uh, just like outrageous. I had no idea. Because remember, they, they always used to say 50% of all marriages end in divorce, right? So they're saying, and this is as of 2020. Mm. They're saying um, every 13 seconds there is one divorce in America. It says over a 40-year period... 67% of first marriages will terminate. 67? Are we getting married young? Well, no, I can't say we're getting married younger. I think people actually aren't, to be I think, honest. Yeah. I think, think people are more fearful Used to of get marriage. married younger. Yep. Yeah. It's wild, right? I think what's interesting, though, and I didn't know the number was 67. I thought it was like 52. That's well, crazy. this is according to like over a 40 year period. So maybe they're even tracking it like a little bit longer yeah. and saying your first one will. 67% be likely to end. The, uh, an interesting st st statistic that I read um, was saying that the statistic of the second marriage, if those two people get married back, then the percentage significantly increases in success. Yeah. Really? Yeah. And I thought that to be really, really fascinating. I haven't like dug deep into it yet, but I just thought that was really I've cool. I've heard a couple stories where like they, people fuck up and then. Come find, back, find themselves, find each other again, like yeah. straight up divorce, like yeah, yeah. papers and everything. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And then they yeah. come back, and then their their percentage of success, I think it was like sixty four percent success rate. Yeah, they so it like completely turns the table. Now I'm not advocating like go back to them just for the success. That's we're not just what talking I'm saying. numbers. We're just, just talking. It's just an yeah. interesting statistic. Yeah. So but, on the toxic masculinity thing that we were just talking about, mm -hmm. I just this is. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of the Apogee program. It's, uh, Tim Kennedy started a school from uh, Matt Bardu. He's he's a action. He, I think he started Action Placer. Right? Action Academy. Action yeah. Academy. So it's an action. Go the go the Apogee Academy is like an action placer academy. Anyways, they posted this. Um, Forty three percent of boys. They're like question toxic masculinity. 43 percent of boys are raised by single mothers. 78 percent this is this is like my life uh 78 percent of teachers are female so close to 50 percent of boys have a hundred percent feminine influence at home and 80 percent feminine influence in school 
toxic masculinity isn't isn't the problem it's the lack of masculinity a hundred percent man and that's like that just like freaking like punched me right in the face because i was like that's exactly the problem like the problem is us men yeah it's us we're the problem we're the men are the problem like let's keep it real why are we allowing continuing to allow um i mean i would beat my my own ass as a young man and and or like your son, if he acts like you, if he acts like absolutely. you were acting, absolutely, absolutely, because I want to, I want to teach him what a real, what it's, what the purpose of being a man is, mm-hmm. and like your roles and responsibilities to not just you and your family, but everyone around you. Mm-hmm. Like the world needs strong men, mm-hmm. and then all that, all that BS was going to go. I mean, I was raised by. I mean, listen, my grandmothers were amazing. My aunts were amazing. My, I have cousins that were like aunt age amazing they loved me Mm -hmm. but i was raised by a bunch of women Mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and in that grant granted my grandfather before he passed was very masculine very like um what's that stoic Mm -hmm. old school old but he was but he was old school and he was a vietnam vet and didn't talk about feelings and didn't you know what i mean like well, you that's know. that's the generation that we're learning from, right? Right, and I don't know, like, of course, I mean, again, I'm still kind of new, so I haven't like dug super deep into all this. But there's almost there's something happening right now, where there's a redefining of what a man actually is. Yeah, um, I think it's because there's such a polar, and and this and don't get it twisted. This has been a there's a great video. I don't even know who it is. It was it was a it was a, a gentleman on a podcast talking about. Uh, specifically black fathers in the home and having jobs and and how it went from you know early 1900s to you know after segregation to martin luther king and then what happened in the 70s Mm -hmm. with uh basically taking away trade schools um what what do you call it babe d destabilizing the black family yeah basically trying purposely trying to destabilize and then you know bringing in you know crack and then just creating a, yeah, a the break, government, the breakdown of family, the breakdown of family, right? right? Because and they knew that the black family unit was the was the strongest thing yeah. in the black community. So if they made it go away, and, they and could control right, better, right, right? Right. And you see that, right? You see that in 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 families in general before the seventies, good, bad, or indifferent. There was a man in the home. Mm-hmm. He went to work. He came home. You know, like you hear stories about like them spanking their kids and things yep. like that. But there was a stability there. And after that, you saw this breakdown of the family unit. Mm. And I liked it. You know, you don't have to be a you don't have to be a Trump supporter to like the statement. But um, <laughs> everything woke turns to shit. And it's mm. like this whole mentality of like toxic masculinity and like we need, you know, more femininity. And I was like, no, that's we have that. Yeah. Look, how is it going? Yeah. It's going like shit, you know? Well, I think, you know, one of the, the, the shift that I'm starting to see now that I'm like really in this space yeah. and like seeing and kind of getting in touch with people that are doing similar work is it's the, it's the restoration of a man being able to be emotionally intelligent and right. saying like, it is okay to be sad. It's okay to cry. Dude, it's okay to cry, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like it has to be okay. Um, and redefining what that means to be a man, it's going to create new leaders. I don't know if you know the guy, Jason Wilson, you know, Jason Wilson, Mm. look into him. Um, he, uh, he just said this, I was listening to a podcast of his and he does this work, but with kids and also using martial arts, which is awesome. Super. Yeah. It's super awesome. Um, and he said that once the man like gets restored, the world will, will be better. I literally said the same thing. I, well, well it, I said what I said was if men were true men, if we were as men, if we were united as a like we like men were really back in the day with mm-hmm. clubs and units. And I mean, just look at the million man march like how before social media, how did you get that many men <laughs> in one location? Fucking phone calls. 
Yeah, that is pretty crazy. And conversations, right? Conversation, like, hey, we're yeah. gonna do this thing as men. <laughs> that is wild, like, right? When you think about, it, like, how like, do they do that? We can't. Pu- I couldn't pull that off <laughs> right now. With, uh, and I've got two hundred forty something thousand followers on. Yeah, you know, I got across the board. I've probably got close to a million people following me. Right, right, right. I couldn't pull that off. Yeah. You hey know guys, what I mean? Come on. <laughs> yeah, they did it like phone calls and like flyers. I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know how. Yeah. But the fact is that if if we had that now, mm-hmm. our society would be very different. And and overall, the if you want to call it the government whatever the powers that be would not be able to pull some of the things that they're pulling because men would go, no, this is not what's in best interest of us as a community, mm-hmm. us as our families. Yeah. You know, I think too, and I'm for, I'm for equality and all of these things, the feminine movement, um, it's like a pendulum, right? Like the yeah. pendulum has swung so far. Now it's like created a suppression of men, yeah, which is unhealthy. And, well, I'm, and I'm not against the feminine movement. Like, empower every, I'm, I want everyone to be empowered. Sure. But a man needs to be a man, too. Yeah. And Well, here's what's crazy is um, our coach, actually, Ali Kilbert, just mentioned, and I, I did never connect the dots, and I actually work with, uh, I work with a hormone clinic, um, Core Medical Group. It's one of our sponsors as well, um, who does t- TRT for men and women. Mm-hmm. Um, and... I got a call from the CEO and he said, Hey man, the FDA is going to start regulating ACG, hmm. ACG, uh, and, and two other drugs. Clomid. Yeah. Two other, two other drugs. Fertility sort of. Which treatment. are specifically for male fertility hmm. and make, making sure that men stay mm-hmm. on a hormonal level. Healthy. They were getting rid of that. They're, they're not getting rid of it. They're making it, the FDA is, like, I guess, like they're securing it. They made it a controlled substance that you can't just, like, a clinic can't just sell. Like, mm. you have to be. It's like harder to get. It's yeah. harder to get, and like yeah. insurance has to approve it. And so there's a runaround, right? All yeah. of a sudden, why these specific drugs? They're, they're, they're. There's nothing mm. special about them other than their intended use is male fertility, right? And keeping men fertile on a hormonal level, male. Mm. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like we could open up a huge can of worms going down that. <laughs> you see what I'm man. saying? But like, I, I didn't. I, I didn't do. even. I'm like, so here we have this whole systemic idea of masculinity is bad, men are bad, fathers are bad, and then on on the FDA side, they're legitimately attacking, regulating, mm, re- and regulating male fertility drugs. Yeah. That's like, a, how do you not connect the dots on that? Yeah. It's like a weird power right. thing. <laughs> Conspiracy theory. So. Um, like intermission? What is yeah. this? <laughs> so, how, like, I just don't understand why. I mean, other than just control and just, but, like, all it does is hurt us. Well, I think... I mean, I don't know the why, but if I was going to guess, it's because if there was a, a generation of restored men, all of a sudden men are powerful again yeah. and things are different. It I mean, goes back to me. What I was saying is like, you would not be able to pull the shit that you, you keeping that you pulling. docile. Yeah. Keeping you Just docile. like they do with veterans. Yeah. It's like they give you all these bags of drugs to take and every yeah. single one of them is literally created to keep you from having any sort of like. It's suppression. Right. They yeah. want, they don't want you to have adrenaline. They don't want you to have. Anything that can make you alert, aware, and you're a trained killer. No, oh, right, sure. <laughs> what they want to control you. Yeah. Well, so then, so then the mission, the mission ahead is is how can I be of service to the men? Yeah. So, 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 talk to me about that. Um, what is the hardest thing men face when going through divorce? The almost like finding yourself how to how to find yourself again you know like before you can make yourself whole you need to know what that whole looks like yeah you know um i was talking to a guy um and long story short circling it back around he wanted to be the most badass version of himself but he was denying himself of that he was in his own way yeah it's usually we usually are yeah, almost yeah. Um, almost all the time, and that's just men and women. That's you know? what we talk about the agogi. I said I, when we when we sit down. So our our coaching program, the agogi, we one of the things we say is like, what is the 
you have this image of you, the mm-hmm. very best version of yourself. Mm-hmm. And majority yep. of our clients are fathers, mm-hmm. you know, older, older guys that are, mm-hmm. you know, in their careers and got kids and wives and everything. But that's the biggest thing is they like, man, they, they look in the mirror and they go, I'm just not the version that I have in my head. Mm-hmm. And typically it's, it's exactly what you said. Yeah. They're just in their own way. You're in your own way. It's yeah. for whatever reason. It's like, but it's not for whatever reason. It's like, there's, you know, there's these different movements that are saying it's not okay for you to be this badass guy. Yeah. Like that badass guy's dangerous or we got to make sure this badass guy's not making other badass guys. <laughs> Followers. Not, but that's the but that, but that's the goal, right? Yeah. Badass guys <laughs> making more badass guys. <laughs> that's the yeah. goal. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So so then the whole thing is is how do you how do you get out of your own way to Yeah, so what would you tell him? Well, we, it was it was in a conversation. It was like a pre it was a pre conversation to becoming a client. Okay. So he's about to become a client, and um, we're gonna dig. We're gonna dig, and we're gonna start setting some standards for his life. We're gonna start creating some new goals, literally creating new visions. Um, the way the way our mind works is thoughts, feelings, actions. That's the way our mind works. You create a thought, you attach a feeling to that thought, and then that drives forth an action, whether it's a good. Or bad. I like that. It's just it, it's that's just the way that it is. It's so simple, really. But it make uh, for me it, it, you saying it that way connects a lot of sense because we can create things. So you have a thought, you attach a feeling, you can create a narrative, and that can be a bad thing also because you can create 100%. bad things. Hundred percent. And now they're like, wait a minute, I'm not not to not to use your words, babe, but you know now you're if and if somebody denies you that they're like, wait, my feelings are invalid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Well, no, they're not invalid, but they're also not healthy. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Feel, feelings are triggers. They're they're yeah. to let you know what's going on. Right. So like, so it goes like thoughts, feelings, actions, right? Well, you can evaluate that in any direction. Yeah. You know, if you're taking an action, well, what does it feel like taking that action? What is what what thought is attached to that feeling? And then you start adjusting from there. So like with this client that we're going to start working on, that's exactly what we're going to start going down. We start looking at the thoughts. Like, what do you think about yourself? What do you think about the, the most badass version of yourself? Oh, so you're gonna d- you dig into some belief, some some belief factors. You have self to. belief. You have to. And a lot of them is, uh, I would imagine, limiting belief factors. Most of it, that's the way that it is for all of us. Yeah. It's it's I mean I touched on it a little bit. Every coach is generally doing the same thing. Yeah. You know, like if you don't think you can get somewhere in business, why? If you don't think you can be the best, and, and the, if you don't think you can, you or can you can't, you won't, you, you won't. Not even you can't, but you won't. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's done. Uh, yeah, you're done. Exactly, hundred yeah. percent. So it's like I was talking to a guy the other day, and I'm like, well, he he's like, I want to be a fighter, and I'm like, well, do you think you can be a fighter? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, then you won't. <laughs> <laughs> End of conversation. You're done. done. Yeah, yeah, you're done. Then, so yeah. then the next question is, well, do you want to be a fighter? Yes. Okay, then do you believe it? Uh, I'm not really sure. Okay, well, then you won't. <laughs> So, but then you start. You see, you see where this is going, bud? This is go- yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it's layers. It's it's yeah. layers, and the yeah. layers are so deep that. And then you got to get into why do you believe that? Correct. Yeah, what happened in your life? Who yeah. said what? What why, trauma? Why, why is a magic question that we're all taught not to ask in elementary school? Yeah, it's the greatest question as a coach. Oh, that's what I want to get my kids to ask everything. Why that whole old the old parenting thing? Because I said so. That is bullshit. <laughs> Well, that's, 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 <laughs> that's the, that's what we're taught. Right. As men, especially like right. stop crying. There's no time for that. Right. You know, push it down, push it yeah. down, push it down. So you want to hear something fascinating, right? Is like energy is, or emotions are energy emotion, mm-hmm. right? So like when you get nervous, like where do you feel it for you? Like, let's say stomach. Like in your stomach, right? But like, if you, if you have like a breakup, where do you feel it? Oh man, your heart. Yeah, so you actually feel it in different places in your body, right? Yeah. So what's going on is there's like this trauma and actual energy that you're carrying with you. That's so a bizarre. That's a bizarre th- concept to think about. And I remember being, <laughs> I remember being, uh, I guess my one of my first loves breaking up with me as a teenager. Yeah, the heartache, puppy love. Oh my god, dude, that's a real thing. It is a real. Th- of course, it's a real thing. That's a real thing, man. Well, like, of course, it's real. My little heart was broken, and I felt that in my chest. Yeah, well, so so then, so what? Okay, so let's. But I never, but I never really thought about it as 
the way you're saying it. But yeah, it's absolutely. Yeah. So then if you have, if you have this junk stored up, yeah, then when you start, when you're, you know, your head directly connected to your gut, right? It's basically the same matter, which is fascinating. So if you're, if your gut's trying to send you thoughts, right. Or, and reciprocal, what does it have to work through? It's literally going through all this shit that you're carrying around this trauma. Yeah. And so once it gets to your head, it's not going to, you're going to make stupid decisions. You're going to, you're going to deny yourself of the most badass you because you I got like all this that. shit that you're working through. Yeah. So you're filtering it through garbage. Essentially. Yeah. hundred percent that you're carrying around. Yeah. And so by working through thoughts, you can question your way to that. Like, yeah. what is that there? Why do you feel that there? What thoughts attach to it? Okay. Then let's address that. Yeah. That's what you need to address. And then once you can address that, then you can, you can put in a new thought. It's not, it's, it's not, what do we say? Making it whole, not, yeah. not whatever what did we say. Fill in a hole. Void. Planting, I like the, th- I like what you said. Yeah. Fill in the hole versus planting a tree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you can plant a tree in that new space. Right. Right. So that's metaphorically what I do. Like <laughs> <laughs> I plant trees and people. I plant trees. No big deal. <laughs> oh man. Um, and that's the mission one at a time. Like, yeah, I have a big badass version of me that I'm trying to get to because we all are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not everyone. Well, across in this room. Yes. The ones, the ones that are doing something. Yeah. yeah. And the tribes that you surround yourself with. Yeah. Yes. Like the people, that's a huge one too. You know, like who, who are you spending your time with when you're going through trauma? So when you go through divorce, what do you turn to and who do you turn to? Oh yeah. That's a huge one. For me, I was very blessed that I got introduced. I didn't do jujitsu really bef- much before my divorce. Like I was lucky to have oh, found let's, it. Let's crack that open up. I want to talk about jujitsu. Let's do it. So <laughs> you literally found right around the same time. Yeah. Right. Kind of towards the end of my marriage is when I got introduced to jujitsu. What a great time. I you know. Man. Dump all, all your woes in that. Yeah. On the mat. How did that, how did that, cause doing jujitsu now, Mm-hmm. Compared to days one through oh, gosh. sixty. Oh gosh. Whew. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy it's now. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> uh those first those first few months, man, that's they're rough. That's rough. Very right? rough. That's that's a rough. Yeah. So how did that how did that play in those first days? Um how did it play into as far as like, like my how, recovery? Yeah, your like transition. Yeah, your, tra- your transition. Um because it's hard. It's definitely hard. It's so, I mean, one, you're dealing with a very hard transition emotionally, Mm -hmm. physically even. And then you've got this thing where you essentially are just paying someone to get your ass kicked. Yes. You're paying someone else for someone else to. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not getting paid for arm barring (laughs) somebody. You're you're paying someone else to allow someone else. (laughs) To whoop my ass. To whoop your ass. Correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. backwards when you think about it, right? (laughs) Yeah. How did you get through? I just I, I paid this guy who allowed this other guy to kick my ass several times a week. Yeah, and then and, I learned. Uh, and, and then uh, and then I felt better. Yeah, then I felt better. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, okay, so here's the thing about jiu-jitsu, right? And I try to tell this to everyone that asked me about it is, like, yes, you gain these, like, awesome skills to control a human. Yeah. At, it's at a fundamental level, right? Yeah. But what I get from it um, is so much more. The intangibles that you get get and gain and grow into through jujitsu are so much more valuable. The humility, the patience, the grace, the respect, the, the, the grit, Yeah, you know, the, the ability to withstand all of those are like intangibles. And once you can learn those, you can apply those to every area of your life. Yeah. So for me, really learning those things by force, um, help me to start applying those everywhere else. But like, go back. I want you to go back your first sixty days. Day one, I got on like eight times. It was but, horrible. But then, like, when you went home and you're like alone, mm-hmm. how did that make you feel? Did you look forward to going jujitsu because you were alone? A hundred percent. Yeah. Was, yeah. It, was it something like it? It was like, okay, I'm gonna go get beat up because otherwise, I'm sitting on the couch and I'm just being miserable. Yeah. So a couple things. A couple things for me played into it, and this is why it's so important to have people. Yeah. Um, so one of my best friends, his name is Jason House. He owns Iridium Sports. Is like one of the biggest UFC uh, management companies in the world. He was like, dude, go do jujitsu. Like, this is what you need to go do. Like, when he found out about your 
about your yeah, separation. Yeah, pretty divorce. much. Yeah. And I was like kind of looking for something new anyway. So he was like, go do that. Um, so then once I started now, I'm also the kind of guy too. I've already been driven athletically. Like again, I you know played football at a very high level, and and I don't say no to a lot of physical like what's the word um, being challenges. Yeah, being physical is not something that it's not new to me. It's not new to you. Yeah. It's not new to me. Yeah, with a lot of people, it's like especially with jiu-jitsu, it's like I'm gonna sweat doing? in this dude's mouth. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, dude, like, and I sweat, and people are like, "Dude, come on, man!" For real. <laughs> I don't even have like hair to catch it. Yeah, we're like, getting we're getting close. We're getting close, bro. <laughs> yeah, You're gonna yeah. smell me. Trust me. Yeah. Um, for some people, it, it's a little bit. For Gus in the military, it's like, yeah, just come over here and mount me. Yeah. This well, is, same with football too. Is, like, yeah, I, I, right. I've, I've, you know, I've been there. Like, I've right. been there, done that. You, you know, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> um, so it was it was kind of easy me easy for me to go back one because I had not peer pressure, but peer respect. Like I was, because I respected my friend Jason, I was like, I need to see this through at least. I can't stop once. Like what kind of like sissy crap me. was that? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I started to embrace the idea of sucking and, and not wanting to suck. Yeah. So I embraced being bad at something. Um, and then it's like the number one way to get through insecurity. <laughs> I feel like being like, okay, yes, I suck right now. And the only way to get better is to show up and be the worst person here. A hundred percent. Yeah. You yeah. gotta be. Yeah. But that's life. Yeah. Right? Like that's everything in life. That's why I think jujitsu is so, and martial arts in general is just so cool because it teaches you so many other lessons that carry over. It's not just jujitsu. What, what's crazy is, um, and there's like now I'm sure you've seen, there's tons of memes about it, but you know, when you are, if you are going through a transition, you are going through a divorce, you're something bad happened. Do you know what you're not thinking about when you're doing jujitsu? Any of that shit, dude. I, I try to tell people when I like that. <laughs> none of it. None of it. Not yeah. at all. Jujitsu for me is like high intensity meditation. Right. When you're engaged, I'm only thinking about you not beating me up and vice versa. I'm not thinking about dinner or my heart ache or can't. You can, you're no, gonna get choked. You're gonna get choked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, gonna, you're gonna get choked. Yeah. Exactly. So go think about that power bill just yeah. a little bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah go ahead. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. What yeah. do you want to talk about now? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um. So yeah. So then the first couple months, I mean, it's like working out, right? The first two weeks suck. Coming yeah. Back. Of course. And then, but then it's like once you got out of a triangle, like Ooh, yeah, I'm a little bit safer. Or my my mentality, my whole white belt. Uh, career, what do you want to call it? Yeah. Um, was about learning how to be good on my back and sweeping people. So I got really comfortable under pressure. That yeah, was my thing. It was just survive. Yeah, survival. For two years, survive. Yeah, exactly. But I would allow myself to get into that position yeah. because in that moment, you're learning so many life lessons too. Yeah. You know, so then that would carry over into my divorce recovery because I'm like, you got more in the tank, bro. Yeah. But it's also okay you're only at 40. That's what I, I like to tell people. Like when you feel like you're about to you're like you want to quit or you think you're done, you're at 40%. Yeah. That's, that's like that's, Goggins things, right? Yeah. Like one of his things. Yeah. Basically, you're at 40%. Yeah. Yeah. You've yeah. got. And that's kind of like coming from, you know, a special operations world. And like when you're going through selection processes and sure. you're, like, you're tired and you're hungry and wet and cold and all this kind of stuff. Bro, you've got so much left in the tank. Right. You just don't think you do. Because you, you, you haven't tapped into it. Yet. Right. You didn't know it's there. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, so then after that, then you start to like, oh, I I got someone in a triangle or whatever. And so then, you know, then the growth the growth happens from there. Yeah. And now now it's just a part of my life. Do you ever feel still to this day that you feel you get a little something? Do you ever feel that like I don't know, anxiety, um, have a bad day or something like that? In jujitsu? No. in life. Oh, and, just in life. And then you go to jujitsu and it's like, Oh god, I needed that. Yeah. Yeah. Still. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, everyone has bad days, you know, like, yeah, you know, one of the, one of the big things as a coach is you teach people how to be aware of their thoughts. Yeah. That's like the biggest tool you can walk away with from a coach is being able to observe your thoughts. But because you're aware of that all day long, you know, like if you had a bad day, you're like watching your thoughts be shitty all day. So you're like, gosh, man, I really need to do something. And jujitsu is that answer for me now. You can fix if, if you're, if you're self-aware, you can fix it. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can coach your way out of it and right. that's, that should be the ultimate goal. Like, pa okay. Pause. This is a city situation, mm -hmm. but I'm in control. So I was talking to uh, another one of my business partners, Johnny, Johnny, Johnny Slicks mm -hmm. talking about, um, basically 
who is in control of us. Meaning, if you say something to me Mm -hmm. to cause a reaction out of me, Mm -hmm. and I react, am I in control or are you in control? Is that a question? Yeah. I think it's the other person. The other person's in control, right? Because they're getting you to react. And we do this all the time. Like, we'll do it. Couples will do it. Your wife will say something to you, knowing that she's going to, she's trying to get a reaction out of you. But she now she's being controlling because she's mm-hmm. getting that reaction. The person that's really in control is the one that reacts based off of their intentions, their desires, their responds goals. Responds rather than reacts. Responds. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. So responds in a and and not necessarily in a controlled manner, but in their direction, mm-hmm. not just like you know cause and effect. Correct. Uh, it's, yeah. A difference there's a big difference you know what i mean like getting cut off in traffic or you know mm-hmm. that's one of his analogies mm-hmm. but you know and then you react and it's like well that just person totally just manipulated you into reacting that way mm-hmm. or the comments on the internet or you know somebody at work it doesn't really matter but i just when i thought about that i was like i don't want anyone to control me mm. Or yeah. anyone to have that power over you yeah i don't want that's what it is it's a, it's, it's a, like it's handing a, over your power it's yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fuck that, man. Yeah. So when you start thinking about like when someone says something to you or something happens and you just like knee jerk reaction, mm-hmm. it's like, dude, you just completely gave that person the power. You played over, your hand. Yeah. You yeah. Played your hand. yeah. Over yeah, your yeah. over your mind. Mm-hmm. They control your mind, bro. Yeah. And fuck that. Yeah. Like I want to be in control of my own mind. Mm-hmm. And that's. And that's what separates, though. I mean, you can you you hear about those stories of the guys like, man, that dude's like UFC fighters. Yeah, the guys that are like McGregor, dude. That dude's mind is locked. Totally, in. To- yeah. You can't get. It's a one way in. That's. I mean, it's a it's a one way out kind of thing. No one's getting in there. You know what I mean? But his his mission was mind penetration, and then I'm gonna fight you. Yeah. It was all mind first. So then, when you're alone, the same concept works, right? Like, who's making this decision? Is it like? the lower version of yourself yeah. or the badass version of yourself. And that all plays a part. Cause then like who, who's in control, right? The lower version or the most badass version or the drunk version or the drunk, <laughs> yeah, the drunk version. But, and it's, and it's really a react and response to when to thoughts, how you respond to your own thoughts is huge or you can react to your thoughts. Like, Oh, that chick's hot. Let me go chase after this chick. Or, that's an attractive person, but I'm mission minded and that's not what I'm going for right now. Yeah. So, um, so let's get, to get back to your business. Mm-hmm. How do we prevent, how does a man, I'm going to go stick with men. How does a man prevent divorce? I mean, it's a good question. And again, it takes two. Of course. Right. It always takes two because one person can make a decision. And that was my experience. One person made a decision and, that was what happened. But as far as our, you've said you, you made mistakes too. hundred percent. So if the, the, the biggest thing that I would do differently in my marriage is I would wake up in the morning and I would ask myself, what can I do today to make this marriage fucking amazing? That's a great, that's a great question. It would change the whole day. Yeah. It would change all your actions. When she was like, Hey, can you do the dishes? I'm like, Maybe this is the one thing. It's that easy. What if it was that? What if that was the case? That was that freaking easy. What if that was the case? Yeah. So do I need to wash the dishes more, babe? <laughs> <laughs> so many things come down to dishes. Nobody likes dishes. Everyone likes eating off them, but no one likes cleaning them. Um, but that's a huge one. So working with someone that's wanting to prevent it, you got to start looking inward to see where you're going wrong. You can't point the finger. You can't externally point the finger. One of my business coach actually said he said that he goes just. L- if you could for a second live in the world where you think that everything successful or failure is your fault, everything, everything, something goes bad instead of think granted other people do things right. But instead of thinking about what the cause was go, what hand did I play in this that I could have made this better? A hundred percent. When I look back on, on my marriage, I asked myself that I just, I've just accepted it's my fault. Right. I've just accepted that. She like she could blame me all because she wants. Because you have to, right? You what, have what's to. the other option? Is just being a victim? Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. That is the other option. But right. then it's the option of like, do I self-empower 
or right. do I become a victim? Yeah. And I'm not a victim. No, I'm not. Yeah. That's a decision. Like I'm right. not a victim. So then you have to admit your bullshit. And we don't like admitting that because then that means that we're not strong. We're not the man anymore. Right. Like, we have faults. We mess up. We're vulnerable. All these things like, and we don't like going down that road. It's easier to be like, Oh, well she decided I could say this. She decided to leave. She left. It was all on her. Like I poor, poor Dustin. Poor me. Yeah. Yeah. Poor <laughs> me. I mean, I had to work through that for sure. For sure. I, I had to work through yeah, the poor of me. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, but taking ownership, taking ownership of where you're at and your own actions. Yeah, because what else do you have? Like nothing. nothing. Like, you have nothing else. Can't can't control their people. Dude, li- life, it's so crazy, but life literally comes down to thoughts, feelings, and actions. That's what life comes down to. So you would wake up. So if you're talking to a guy, you're coaching a guy, and he's like, man, my relationship is not doing so great, and I don't want to get divorced. What can you do about it? Yeah. What can you do about it? And a lot of times the first response is going to be, well, nothing, because she's unhappy. Okay, well, what can you do about that? Maybe it's maybe it's give her a hug. Maybe it's something. I mean, who knows what it is? You know maybe, what I mean? But Maybe it's work on yourself. Most of the time it probably yeah. is work on yourself. What can you do about Focus that? Focus on like, yourself. 100%. Yeah. And not in a selfish way, but in a way of like, I need work. Which, which Are means, you the best version of yourself? Correct. I mean, let's be honest, like if you're facing divorce, if you're in that way, yeah. I don't think either one, either parties necessarily not. No, I can't say for someone if like someone's getting beat and like that's there's yeah. definitely, you know, no, we're I mean, not talking about that. We're, ex- talking, we're not about talking about extremes like extremes are different. talking about two people sharing a life together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Go inward. If, you're, if, you're, if there's a if there's an abuse situation, get help. Period. Absolutely. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Get freaking help. Um, so look inward. Yeah. Figure out what's going on. Yeah. Figure out what's going on. Become an observer of your thoughts. Me- meditate. I sit like there. that. Sit there kinda, for five minutes. Kind of wake up. I like that thought. I'm going to use that, babe. I'm, I'm so happy I'm so that <laughs> you came to that today. <laughs> You're welcome, bro. It's, gonna, it's only going to benefit you. It's, uh, the truth is like, I, I really do believe like for the most part, women, I feel like have a much Mm, I don't know if the word is maybe understanding, but um, like a l- much longer patience, like h- more patience than just about anyone. Women have a lot of patience. And I feel like in a relationship, if things are starting to stray or whatever, like women typically will give you a lot, a lot of chances to like work on things, make things better, you know, for the most part, like if a woman really loves you, she'll give you tons of chances and she's mm. got a lot of patience for your shit. If, however, you let her heart go, it's probably done. Like yeah. if her heart is like moved on past you, you're probably done. So like I, for like me personally, I would say in, in the long run, like, I, she's giving me lots of chances. That's I, what she's saying. No, so. I've just, I feel like I've ultimately like being married three times and getting divorced the first two, both my choice, all that stuff. Like the biggest thing that I learned from all of that was like to be more communicative and really express my needs and wants rather than like let it get to the point where I'm just like done and they have no idea and they're like, why? You know? Yeah. So I feel like it's important for both males and females to kind of like f- to prevent a divorce, really communicate before it gets to the point of needing all those extra chances. I mean, and with that being said, like if if a woman is still there, right, and you have all this extended patience, to me, I mean, I'm kind of like delusionally optimistic, just <laughs> naturally in my life. Like yeah. I'm, I'm a pretty pretty happy dude. Like I'm delusionally optimistic. Life can be good always. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is why it's delusional. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, it's, it's not a bad way to live, though. Yeah, but even in that, I'm thinking, okay, well, if if you have this extended patience that we don't have, and to the question of like, how can I prevent this? It yeah. means that there's still something there. Like it's not done just right. yet. Yeah. So now, but now's the time because right. that patience, like you said, and in my experience, like even you saying that, I'm like, damn, what could I have done? <laughs> <laughs> Legitimately, I'm, I'm literally sitting here. Thinking, I don't, and I don't know what that answer is necessarily because it's the first time I've thought about this in that way with the extended patience. But you know, 
what can I do today to make this a great relationship? Yeah. Or whatever your version of that question is. Yeah. That's but I, awesome. but I would wake up. I mean, that's what, that's what I tell everybody. Wake up in the morning and ask yourself, what can I do to make this marriage the best marriage I can, I can make. And I think that if you are committed to that question, I think your entire day will be different. I think how you and even approach work will be different. Like, why are you working? Yeah. Okay. So then that's personal growth. So now you got a guy, um, and I'm sure you've come across these guys that, that like, you know what I'm going to, and we have them with the Agogi too, is like we've have, we, and you've probably seen this before. It actually happens with alcoholics too. And mm-hmm. so we have a guy that's overweight, right? And he's mm-hmm. like, you know what I'm going to be, I want to, I want, I have this desire to be the best version of myself. Mm-hmm. I want to be fit. I want to be a good, I want to be able to, I want to be around. I don't want to get heart disease and die. I don't mm-hmm. want to die from obesity and heart disease. I want to play with my kids. Mm-hmm. I want to do jujitsu with them. I want to do all these things. I want mm-hmm. to live life. I want to, you know, have a relationship with my wife. So they start going down this self recovery road, making them better. Mm-hmm. But the wife doesn't. So now here we are in this situation where, and let, remove the kids from it, but yep. we're, we're in the situation where you have a relationship. The, the man is waking up and going how seize the day <laughs> seize the day yeah right kick the day in the dick you know what i mean what can i do to make this the best day and the best relationship what can i do for my wife but it's just not being reciprocated mm. and then you know I, in, you know in my appearance like that's where a divorce is gonna eventually happen yeah i mean i think so i mean i, I think this is a question for you right like what would it take because the way I, the, the way I would answer that is like you have to keep leading. You keep leading by example, yeah. right? But I don't know from a woman's perspective, and this is still new in this yeah. journey of switching my business and all. My whole focus has changed. Yeah. Like, what would it take for the woman to be like, you know what? Like, he's starting to live his best life. I want that too. Well, I think honestly, she wrote a book. I, I did write a book about <laughs> called it. "How Not to Be a Miserable Cow." <laughs> <laughs> So that's literally the topic. But one of the things being that when that happens, a lot of times, like let's say you're in a relationship and you've been married for quite a while and then the man takes that stance, it's 100% what you're saying. Like most of the time when that starts to happen, a normal housewife will become very insecure. Mm. Yeah. Where, why is he getting better? What What does he want? Where is he going with this? Does mm. he want me to be better? It turns, they typically will turn it like, there's something wrong with them and maybe there is. And so it's like, instead of, instead of, um, really allowing that, that narrative to play out in your wife's head or whatever, like we're doing this together, we're getting healthy right. together. Like what it's you like, just said, lead. Yeah. yeah. If it's, if it becomes like a leadership thing where it's like, I want this for us. Like, I want to show you the vision I see for us. Well, not kinda, like there's we, something wrong with you. We kind of went with that with alcohol, yeah. you and I. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like there's something wrong with you and I want you to change. It's like, I want our whole life to be better and yeah. here's what I see. And, and almost like create that picture and that vision board together of what your life can be and g- so that you're heading in that same direction together. Now, granted, that might not always happen. It might not always work out in your favor. Sure. Because the messaging that women are getting from mainstream media and everything is like <laughs> this ridiculous like picture of romantic comedies yeah. and this high, you know, like it's not that it's <laughs> not that. It's that at first. I mean, honeymoon's <laughs> cool, you know, and then after that, like real life starts. <laughs> right. And so how, you know, women have to, to get to that on their same thing, too. Like, I need to develop myself. I need to grow. I need to be healthy we, it, for us to be the best version of a marriage. We have to be the best version of ourselves together. But you, they have to come to that. So there's a lot of growing that you got to do together too. Yeah, but I mean to that though. Then like as far as an action that a guy could take, it'd be like start dating again, start there you go, loving bingo. again, start. So you I, know, I had a start talk serving with, again. I had like, a talk with one of my clients, and this is something I have to do as well, and I, I struggle with as well, just because we're busy. But I I do make an effort um, to do it because it matters. Is the whole date. Like the date night thing, right? The date. And then I, so I had a conversation with a client who was his, his significant other was, so he's dropping significant amount of weight. I mean, we're talking like over 300 pounds. Heck yeah. And he's like crushing it. He's crushing it. He's He's looking sexy. It's awesome. Yeah. He's looking (laughs) sexy. Right. (laughs) And his wife is, looks great already. Mm -hmm. Like it was just him that got that slipped. His wife looks great. But by him getting back in shape, it's like that. It's caused some insecurity 
with her. And um, so I said, listen, man, like this is what you have to do. You have to plan the date night. Mm -hmm. You have a kid, plan the date night, get a mm -hmm. babysitter and don't make it a discussion. Mm -hmm. Be the man. And lead. And lead. Yeah. Say, this is what we're doing. And then cover everything. Like, we're going to be gone from this time to this time. The baby's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. We're going to go right here. They have the numbers. Everything. So any question or any wrench that she tries to throw, yeah, bro. I'm got like, him. Got him, coach. Got him. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. And I told him, I said, dude, make it like a military operation. Like, make it that. Cover all your bases. Like, kick every course of action possible yeah. that you can think of. Write it all down. And then plan for all, uh, plan for all of it. Yeah. And then go execute. Yeah. And I said, even if it's the first one is not okay, and she doesn't enjoy herself, it's just like the day one of jujitsu, bro. Day one's not okay. Day one's not okay. I said, but what's going to happen is, even if it's just for an hour, you guys go grab something to eat. You go on a walk. You go to see a movie. Whatever it is, mm -hmm. just go execute it. And if she's freaking out and worried, she comes back. Everything's okay. Boom. Mm -hmm. You survived your first jiu-jitsu training. <laughs> yeah, dude. You know yeah. what I mean? And You're still up, alive. And then show up again tomorrow. And then do it again. And then every little bit, it's going to get, like, one, you're spending time together. But also, she's getting trained going, okay, we did this thing. Mm -hmm. Everything's okay. Yeah. You know? And I think it, it, I think it builds in that, that repetition. 100%. And I think, I think in that, too, and this is where, like, men need to get in touch with their own personal feminine meaning like romance and like love and we that. suck at that we do suck at that yeah. but it's not not there too no. like it's in us like yeah. when i was a kid, okay when you got your heart broken when you were 16 or whatever bro <laughs> come on dude. much more romantic back then than, <laughs> than i, than but I that's am my now point, yeah. right, but that's my point dude we start out that way you didn't choose to be romantic you just were romantic yeah and then somewhere along the lines being romantic was like not manly right and chivalry is like dead right but we didn't start that way, dude. That's a good point. You like, were you were we were somehow we were trained we that were trained. it was better to be hard than romantic and open vulnerable and, and open yeah. and yeah. those kinds of things. And like that's part of the restoration is like a man getting in touch with being vulnerable. Like, dude, it's okay to be fucking romantic. Like, it's okay. Yeah. It's not and while being mission minded, like you need to open a door and bring back chivalry, man. Like yeah. it, why not? Like, is that when I do those when we go on date nights, does that make a difference for you? Um, I mean, I'll tell you what makes a difference for me is kind of when you like, well, you you hold my hand or you'll lead me in somewhere and kind of like stand in front to like clear out crowds. So I'm not like I do that a lot wandering loose. But I've been in relationships where it's like there's a ton of people and you're like shit and they get their use because men can like just bulldoze through crowds right especially when you're like a bigger dude yeah, yeah when you're a bigger guy, <laughs> guy, people get out of the way yeah, excuse yeah. me excuse me so it, it's so nice when you're with somebody that kind of like leads you through a crowd or kind of helps with that kind of thing i don't care as much about the door thing but that just like kind of leading in in a circumstance like that is like chivalrous to me i hate being like 50 feet behind a dude and and, and being like okay i see you later <laughs> well and that's that's hugely important too right like opening a door for you is like not important but leading a crowd is like know your woman yeah yeah like maybe you don't know who she is anymore maybe that's causing some problems <laughs> maybe that's where that date those dates and the communication kind of open yeah. up yeah but you could be sneaky about the mission too like a week ahead like what's your favorite thing and she's like horseback riding Whatever, you, whatever. Like, I don't know. That just came where the head. fuck did that come yeah. from? I don't know. Dance yeah, win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, may, but maybe she saw like a sitcom and they went horseback. Dude, go horseback riding. So speaking of what Ali just said, this is where we talk about the whole romance thing, and like, this is what always kills me. This this one thing in movies and television shows. If you ever see every single time you see a man and woman in bed, how are they sleeping? How do they wake up? Like cuddling? Shoulder to shoulder? No, they're embracing each other. They're like all like cuddled up to each other. Oh. I'm like, who in the hell well, that's sleeps what I started, like that like, all night long? <laughs> no, it starts that way. I mean, sure, for like five minutes, but yeah, then, then like your arm gets tired yeah. and it falls asleep, yeah. your shoulder hurts. But like, like <laughs> they're like you're painting this like this picture for these young women that you're just gonna like all be embraced all, like for eight hours in, in the bed. Nobody sleeps like that. It's uncomfortable. It's hot. It's, yeah, you're like you're right. I'm like a million degrees. I sleep. <laughs> I sleep on a pad that is programmed to be 61 <laughs> degrees. You know what I mean? Like, that's it's not the way. It's cold on your side. It's yeah. freezing. Yeah, she's like, this is a tundra. I got to get out of here. 
but uh, but it is they paint this picture of like you know every show every movie it's always they wake up and they're like oh we were all we were cuddling and like so no. yeah. speaking and, of that and nobody's breath stinks anymore <laughs> on TV. They're just like, are you out. kidding me like yeah. what yeah <laughs> um speaking of that that kind of leads it's a great lead in for what you were going to talk about expectations because you started to t- mm. touch on it but Start just elaborate. Three, three, two, one, go. <laughs> elaborate yeah. on expectations go. and relationships. No, I think I think expectations in general, um, they just almost always lead to disaster. Um, man, where do, where do you even start with expectations? To be honest, I mean, I think expectations is first of all, it's like it, they they exist in the future. Like expectations aren't present. You know, like right now, I'm not expecting anything from you. We're just talking. Yeah. We're having a good time, right? Yeah. I I had expectations coming in here that I had to deal with on my way in. Because, uh, you know, like social media, you want to get to know people, whatever. Yeah, before yeah. You, you know, so I'm like, dang, this podcast seems like super legit. And he's got all <laughs> these followers. And like, man, I don't want to choke. I don't want to say the wrong thing. All these kinds of things. So then I started attaching myself. Then he got here and he was like, oh, this is work. <laughs> no, no, no way. No, what did I say? What yeah. did I say? I said, this is a, this is an awesome this is setup. Legit. Yeah. This is an awesome <laughs> setup. Um, but literally on my way in, I had to work, I had to deal with my own expectations. Yeah. Of, Expectation like, management. Yeah. Like how do you need to show up? Well, just show up as you, because you're the best you can be today and you're going to be better tomorrow, but you might be better than yesterday. So yeah, let go of that expectation. Like let, it, let go of expectations of, for example, like what you might think of me or how I could even show up. Like, whatever, you know, like when we saw each other at the jujitsu, at the jiu-jitsu match, I held the door. Speaking of holding the door, yeah. I held the door for you guys. Do you remember that? I yeah, do. I do. Yeah. Because I remembered your face. Well, when she said that, I was like, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. So then when I was, when I, when you guys. Because we had the baby. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you were pushing the car. So yeah. I'm like, they got it, you know, whatever. And, um, but then I was like, man. That guy looks like SF. Like, <laughs> but it's because I've been around it. Right, so I, right. I can we were, so we were, we were talking about that before uh, before we uh, started recording about how we all think that these you know these soft guys are super blending in and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> You're full of shit. You're not. Mm-hmm. You're not. At least as someone that's been around it. Yeah. You know well, I mean? no, dude. They all look like they're all wearing the same kind of clothes. They're <laughs> all built. Boots. Oh, their yeah. their face looks all weathered. Molly you know backpack. I mean? <laughs> you know? Everyone's got some kind of facial hair or Tattoos. super super clean. Yeah. 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 You stand out, bro. Yeah. But so in, but then with that like I created expectations in my head. Like, yeah. man, this dude's like some badass. I I'm, I never served. I didn't do any of those any of these things. So. Definitely not. Well, Definitely not. But so, so still getting beat up by 125 pound people. That's life, dude. That's, that's jujitsu life, dude. That's jiu-jitsu. Except that one. You think you think you're tough? Yeah. Until some 15 year old girl who's been doing jujitsu for 10 years leg locks you. Yeah. yeah, right. Knee bars you. Yeah, yeah. But so, but so the whole point of that was an example of how the expectations they only exist in the future. So if you can, if you, and, and those expectations are usually attached to some kind of value of self-worth or of those kinds of things. And so if you can, if you learn, if you can learn how to accept things in the present moment, let go of all expectations, then, then whatever happens to you, you can, you can respond accordingly. Do you think that, do you think that expectation management is, is a problem on one side of the sex than other? Like, do you think that women have a higher <laughs> expectation than maybe men do. A hundred percent. That's how they feel like it's all going to be. <laughs> we just have to get married and then. And I'm not Fairy trying to tale. be, I'm not trying to, you know, cause more issues when they're not, but I, I, sometimes I feel like whether it's society or whatever, women do have this like very high level expectation of what well, things Disney, should. Disney did that. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. Great. Thanks right. Disney. Yeah. yeah. Disney. But no, I mean, I think everyone's expectations are just different. I don't think that it's necessarily more or less. I just think that they're different. Yeah. Because then there's also like the stereotype housewife that's been painted for guys. Right. Yeah, like I, I don't have that. That's but it's not, not necessarily. That's not which. That's, yeah. But I don't know if most guys even necessarily want that. I think they think. That's, I think they think they do. Yeah, but then it gets boring. Yeah. It's that's boring. That's right? boring. Like, yeah. That's just yeah, there's no even way to put it. It's just boring. Yeah. So I don't I don't know if one has more expectations than the other. I just think that they're different. Okay. Because we carry a lot of expectations, whether we realize it or not. And 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 once you can learn how they're to just sh- not they're not vocalized 
For who? For men. No. I don't think men's expectations are vocalized. I think sometimes they're not even mentally vocalized. I think we sometimes have them, mm-hmm. and we don't even realize that we have them. Well, that's where it starts until, to, a, a, until we get older. Well, that's where it starts to come down to when you started asking me, like, what was your family life like? Yeah. So what I ca- the expectation that I carried into my marriage was that I was going to have this cohesive unit that I experienced as a kid mm-hmm. that's going to be the same now. And it wasn't that. So I had, I was carrying with me then every single day that, that maybe that it wasn't in my mind what it should have been. Yeah. I was, I was waking up in the morning with an unmet expectation. That's not fair. Now you're set up for failure. You're setting up for failure at the beginning of the beginning of each morning. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's how, instead of it being what this is, this is. This Instead is, of it being you and me, and we're building this together. This yeah, is, it's to create. Really, truly, that is one hundred percent something you have to create. Like, yeah, you're right. Like our really, our thing together is that's it's, it's just you two. It's us. Yeah, yeah, and it's, it's new, YouTube. and it's 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 a new book. Yeah, it's not it's not based on anything. Cut all ties. Yeah, yeah. but but which means you have to detach from all your expectations. I mean, yeah. we you both have been married before, so there's yeah. these there's going to be the expectation that this one's going to be different. Throw that one out the book. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, let's just right. keep it real. So, I don't think that I don't think it's one over the other. I just think that they're different. Okay, that's that's awesome. That's I've a never great way to put I've it. never heard it put that exact that way. But you're right. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, did, did, did we go down the expectation road? I think so. I think it's like because that's my biggest thing is like if you don't communicate your expectations, then they're really unjust expectations for you to expect somebody to just know what you're what you're thinking, what you're desiring, what you want, what your needs are. That's like completely unjust. It's not fair. You have to, if you have expectations that you want to talk about, you you have to like actually communicate them with your partner. Yeah. And I think it's important to define like expectations versus a want. Right. Oof. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, it's fair to say like, I want, I would want you to do this and that would make me feel a certain way. Yeah. But then to, to, attach that expectation like okay if this doesn't because an expectation is what an if then like if this doesn't happen then oh yeah then what right now we're setting ultimatums yeah, yeah. so then you see how it starts to go down this road yeah. so then if you that's if you, n- that always leads negative right but yeah. if you express your wants like this is how i want to be loved you know the five love languages like yeah, this is exactly. how i want to be loved or how i need to be loved but don't yeah, she e- talks to me about that a lot yeah the, but don't expect it Just right let it happen and then if it's not happening keep communicating it keep communicating oh, it I'll communicate it. <laughs> <laughs> but what what's interesting is um for me personally there are certain things that do not come naturally to me um as far as like the love languages mm-hmm. um like damn near di- very difficult for me to do it's like, like getting blood out of a turnip yeah <laughs> but what i've noticed is forcing myself It's not like, I hate to say like fake it till you make it, but forcing myself to do it on repeat for a long, a long period of time and just literally like, this is not for me. I'm forcing Mm -hmm. myself to do this down the road. It becomes easier, Mm -hmm. more natural. It becomes more natural. Well, because you like you change. And and I think that there's a, because I get the response back from her Mm. that I actually want Mm -hmm. the there's like this uh it's like cyclical it's yeah and there's like a whole i'm sure there's like some sort of psych psychological you know uh if you give a mouse a resp- cookie yeah no. <laughs> well, I mean, kind it's of like, like a pavlovian response type thing but like because i forced myself to i don't know give me one babe that i so my mind's words of affirmation and yeah. so that's really difficult for him to both give and receive words of affirmation it does not come natural at all whatsoever <laughs> mm. i just don't do it and it well, is such a big deal to me. So now he's like worked on like, you know, instead of just because he thinks nice things, he just doesn't <laughs> say them out loud. <laughs> so getting him to say it, what he's thinking when he's when he feels it or, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's been challenging. But as he's done it and, and grown in it, like he, he it's like normal. Yeah. Well, you know what's interesting that I've, you know, because we even in my marriage, we did the whole five love languages thing. And what I find most interesting about that is like you learning what your love languages are. They're not for you. Not for you. They're for the other person. Yeah. And that's where that's where like loving comes in is like 
doing that thing for that person even if you don't want to do it. That's yeah. why I have agape written right here, right? Yeah. Because you have to learn how to love everybody in the same, it, not in the same way, how they want to be loved. Why is it paper clipped? So that I attach love to everything that I do. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I stuck with Greek because I got, you know. You're born there. Born in Greece. Yeah, yeah born in Greece. Greek's cooler. Agape is a big word. It's a big, big word. It's a big word in Greek. Yeah. yeah. It's the word. It's like the, it's the. Yeah, it is the, it is the word. It's the. But then, but then learning how to take action. So then if you woke up every single morning, you were like, how could I make this the best marriage I possibly could? It'd be doing that thing that you don't necessarily want. Not, not, not that you don't want to do it, but, but it it's becomes, not for you. It becomes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but who said loving someone is for you? Right. Like, right. I don't know whether you believe in God or not, but like that love is, it's flowing to us whether we want it or not. That's yours. It's yeah. yours to receive. Yeah. Right. But I, but I, but that, that's the thing is like, it's just like working out, just like jujitsu, anything like that. It's the reps, putting those reps in, in your relationship, putting those reps into those, you know, doing that love language thing, you know, me being, doing, you know, her big things or words of affirmation and physical touch. Neither of those are, <laughs> are big for me. All right. You know what I mean? And, uh, but I've, I've, I've put the reps in and you know what my, I get the resp- like the way she treats me on the back end of that mm-hmm. is the way that I want. Yeah. But when I didn't do those things, I didn't get reciprocated the way that I want. It's crazy know? how serving others, we still get what we, and the, in the need. end you get, you get what you want, Yeah. but you have to give, you have to give and you have yeah. to give on, re- on, re- on, put the reps in. Yeah. You know? That's that's the interesting thing about serving and like like my whole mission now is like serving men, and what's so cool is, and it'll, and it's like this weird thing, right? Like I'm serving because then when someone else has a win, I feel good about it. So then yeah. I want to serve even more. Of course. So then it's like this: Am I serving selfishly, or am I serving because I want to <laughs> serve? You know what I'm saying? But it is yeah. this cycle of it's probably some chemical like serotonin, dopamine, whatever. Like, well, your stack wins. It's 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 the same way. It's that. So there's a there's an actual. Uh, psychological portion of like negative, right? And if mm-hmm. you go negative, you have a bad day. What happens? You start looking for the negatives mm-hmm. and you start finding, then you just have a really shitty day. Yeah. Same exact thing happens on the flip side of that. Mm. You start, you, if you can find a, an, a win early in the day, mm. you start stacking small wins. You're going to just start stacking. Start winning. Them. You're going to start And then winning. what happens? You start winning in life. Yeah. All I do is win, win, win. That's win. right. Um, that's what I do. So, all right. Um, your so on that definite like on that 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 vein, give me your definition of masculinity. Oh gosh, dang, that's a big one. And you don't even have to give me a definition. Now like, I'm squirming in my chair. You see? I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. So don't give me a definition because that's like too linear. Give description. Me, yeah, give me a description. Like what is a you know? Because I have my own, and it's very different from what I thought it was when I was in my twenties. Mm-hmm. Um. But what is a man like? What is the, what is a what is a real man look like? To paint a picture, you know what's funny? What's coming to my head is William Wallace. Oh yeah, Braveheart. <laughs> yeah, like a, a man encompasses like every every area of life. To um, how would I even put this? That's a big question, man. No one's ever asked me that before. Uh, You're gonna write a whole blog about it now. I'm about to do something with it. <laughs> I mean, later, not right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not right now, not right now. Um, hmm, what is masculinity? I think it's the ability to show up in in every moment to be your absolute best, um, to provide, to lead, um, to be strong, protective, while at the same time being vulnerable and loving and peaceful and and gentle and being able to show up in each moment as needed. Um, with love in every situation. Whether it's fight or whether it's comfort. How do you mean? F- fight or comfort? Well, sometimes men have to fight. This is true. Mm-hmm. This is just the reality 100%. of life. So you have to show up. You have to show up. Um, but what are you fighting for? The people you love. Right. Yeah. Um, we did this. Uh, have you come across Johnny Slicks prior to this? No. No? no. We did this... Uh, You've seen the old Gillette commercial about we, toxic masculinity. Men can do better. Or we can do better. Not really. I don't. I don't watch TV. It was, it was a big deal. It was it, a YouTube it, it, ad. It, it, they lost a lot what of. It? Yeah, I never saw it. Then. Ironically Sorry. enough, yeah, they lost. Well, you might not even been in the states. Who knows? Um, I don't remember when it came out. It was years ago. So, 
um, it was it was not a great ad. They lost a lot of customers. Mm. I mean, I, I think that they still are have not fully rebounded from that commercial. Um, so, anyways, um, we made when we made our Johnny Slick shave soap. Mm-hmm. I wanted to make this commercial about um, kind of like that time honored tradition from a man to a son, which I didn't have mm-hmm. of shaving, but the way it should be, mm-hmm. the way the you know in a perfect world, the way that it should be laid out. Mm-hmm. So we rate this commercial about masculinity and basically like what a father is, what a man is. And he's a, how he's a leader. He's a provider. He's a professor. He's a teacher. Mm. Um, and you know, we, we, the, the role of a man is to show our young people how to treat women, mm. how to fight if need be. Mm how to protect others, how to love others, you know, how to stand up for people, how to work hard, mm. you know? And uh, so we read this commercial and it just, it went viral. It, was, awesome. it went viral, but it, all it is, is it's a, it's, it's just images and video of dads teaching them how to shave because that, you know, you, hmm. you squeeze it all down and that's just like one small little thing of a man, whether it be a grandfather, an uncle, a father, friend whatever it may be Mm -hmm. um teaching a young man how to shave something Mm -hmm. so simple so then if you were going to define masculinity then how would you define it like that i mean a man is you are the shepherd if you will Mm. in in every shape or form Mm -hmm. so whatever the need is you i I look at my son i go how do i prepare him for the world what does he need to know? Fuck everything. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? A lot. Right. A lot. Right. He needs to learn how to be a good friend. Mm. He needs to learn how to uh, train his body. He needs to learn how to train his mind. Mm-hmm. He needs to learn how to treat and respect women. Mm-hmm. You know, the things that, it, and hopefully when he's, when he's our age, he doesn't have to go through the things that we went through because he, he learned them growing mm-hmm. up very openly. And um, some mistakes that I made early on with my kids, my first two, is I took those lessons for granted because the world was, I mean, as complicated as the world was, it was much easier than it is this past year and a half, right? (laughs) Yeah. I didn't prepare them for the lessons that I could have taught them and prepared them for. I didn't. Hmm. And that's a failure on me. But like looking at being as a father... I'm like these now that I'm older, it's obvious it's a mm-hmm. much more apparent to me. Like sure. being a, a, a new dad at this age yeah, compared it's totally to totally different, huh? Totally different. Yeah. You know, I'm a different person. Yeah. My definition of masculinity is different. Mm-hmm. But now I'm like, they need to be prepared for all these external factors. And I look at people, uh, like one of our employees, um, actually the Kennedys, um, they have how many they have three or four 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 Mm -hmm. and those kids are so Mm well-rounded i'm sure they have like their own you know everyone does you know what i mean of course but the way that they view the world the way they treat people those kids like all of them are just the most stand up well-rounded down to earth people and they see everything for what it is and they'll call bullshit on things Mm -hmm. you know but it's just so i mean um you know, well, like, like I think about Braden, Bra- you know, like, yeah. you know, Braden is one, he's a jiu-jitsu servant and he's one of the kids that just continually kill, kills me. So good. Like, I, I, he's so good. I feel like I told him, I feel like I'm in an abusive relationship because he beats me up and then he hugs me and tells me he loves me afterwards. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, I don't know how I, how I feel about this because I don't really feel love right now. <laughs> But as much as I do love him, he's, you know, at the end of the day, he's a very, he's very young, right? He's 20 years old. Mm-hmm. But somebody like that, it's like, he is an extremely hard worker, treats everyone with love and respect, mm-hmm. you know, but then sees, you know, is very in tune with the way the world is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that to me is some dope ass parroting. Yeah. Like I think his father, who actually just won the Agogi Challenge, congratulations. How much he wa he lost like twenty something pounds. That's what's up. Yeah, um, and 
So I look at him and I'm like, man, he really did something right in his as a man mm-hmm. with his family and with his kids because otherwise, how do those kids turn out that way? Yeah, you prepare them for the world, mm. and that's what we talk about with the agogi is like you are everything. You are the professor, you are the provider, you are the protector. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's big. It's, it's almost big. it's very difficult to define masculinity and what yeah. it means to be a man. It, it it is, which is why it's a daunting task, and I think that's one reason why. Um, so many we're, people sh- fail. we're so shitty. Yeah, <laughs> it's not easy. No, it's one of the it's the di- most difficult, and it, and there's no days off. You don't no, get to have a day. You wake up. Yeah, <laughs> and then it's there. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's time to be a man. Today. It's time to be a man today, yeah. and that doesn't mean that it's like you have to be this super tough guy. That's actually the opposite. Anytime I see a super tough guy, I'm like, you've got some serious issues that you're hiding. Yeah, I've learned that too. You know. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I when I start seeing like guys that are can are on both sides of the fence mm. you know they can fight just as much as they can they can cry or they can hug and love because mm-hmm. they a man is what they need to be yeah when they need to be it yeah and if you don't have that that pendulum shift if you don't have that emotional range mm-hmm. well then you are not you're doing your tribe a disservice i agree and that's nick's opinion well, and that's why it's, like he said, it's why it's so hard. It's such a, the bar is so high and that's why so many men struggle because there's just like no outlet for them to communicate this sort of stuff or someone to talk to about. And this, this is why men's groups, they're, you know, coaching, um, all these things are, um, like when, when we got my, my, our business coach, she really didn't think that I needed it. The business, the, having a business coach? Yeah. Didn't think I, I didn't it. think it wasn't that I didn't think you needed it. I just felt like if you needed it, then you needed it because you felt like you did. Yeah. But I didn't see you that way. Right. But, but what did you think? I th- I needed it f- for my brain to process everything that I had going on. And now and now that you've seen exponentially, one hundred percent helped him, ter- changed him like more in the last year than he has since we've been together. That's that's so huge because there's a lot of a lot of men. I mean, heck, I didn't work with my first coach, who then was ac- my actual first coach, because my then wife didn't think that it was beneficial. So right. it's it's this this is a whole new interesting like thought, right? It's almost like you're the man, you don't need a coach, like, just be the man. <laughs> it's not the way it works. But that's, and I don't know if that was your thought, but that's, that's no, not. No, no, I think her, her thought was, like, you're already great and super capable and super smart. Look how I much I thought he had done. it in him, and I knew he had it in him, and I didn't see him to need it, but, like but I the said. the peanut butter can't see yeah. the peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I said that at the beginning of the podcast. I remember how I said. <laughs> No, but 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 that is huge because it's you you can see then that working together to do that has benefited both of you. Yeah, dramatically. So that that being said, I, I kind of have one last question before we get. I out have of here. I have one too. Oh, you cool. got one, and I got one. You go. My my biggest one just being like so. Then okay, you came out of all that, mm-hmm. and you know tr- transitioning over. How do you feel like if you can sum up? maybe three stages or steps and this maybe the same stages that you had for your clients of how to be the best version of yourself. And is that what got you past it? If I was going to like narrow my journey down in like three steps, I would say, um, acceptance. Uh, let's see. Narrowing it all down into three. Three to five, whatever. <laughs> Three to seventy-five. <laughs> <laughs> Say whatever you want. Um, no, I think it would be um, acceptance, uh, acknowledgement, and then like intentional growth. Like intentional. It, I like that. Yeah. It, yeah. It, accept if you're being if you're being a shitty human, just accept that you're being a shitty human. Don't try to fake it anymore. Like accept your bullshit. Accept it. Own it. Own it. Yeah. Own it. Yeah. Then create a plan and and start to execute and then like live it out. Did that answer that, yeah. that I mean, if I was gonna really sum it down, but you have to accept your bullshit first. You really do. Um, without accepting it, you don't have a starting point. Or and if you don't accept it, you're gonna start. 
you're going to start that's like on, on with, number seven right. instead of and on number one. And that's like with anything, right? Addiction, anything, like accepting and, and admitting that you have this issue. Admitting there's something going on. Yeah. Yeah. And then creating a, creating a new strategy, a new plan. In, in this case, a new way to think, new thoughts, new goals, and then start going for it. That's awesome. Like so that. mine is, what does Dustin do when he meets the next girl, the next woman? Show up. Like show, you, show up in every way. Like you have a plan, sort of. I don't know if I would say I have a plan yet. Um, I guess you don't have expectations, right? I don't. I really I don't, man. I'll be honest with you. Once you can learn how to let go of expectations, it just makes life so easy. Like it really does. Now, let's let's I do have wants, but I'm yeah. not attached to them the way that I used to be attached to them. Yeah. Like what I want right now is I want someone who is like minded like me who wants to go serve and change the world. And if we can meet there, then everything else is gravy. Like Sure, do I want her to be like smoking hot? Yeah, of course. But that's like <laughs> that's like the selfish part of it. That's like you know, yeah, that's, yeah. that's like the selfish stuff. And, yeah. and um I know that I know that I will show up differently. That's what I know a hundred percent. One hundred percent. And I think that might be why the statistic of two people coming back together is higher, because they're showing up differently for each other. Yeah. A little bit more growth, maybe. Just more intention. Yeah. You've learned. You know, you've learned and you've grown. There's a there's a weird part of me that's like, if I would have met my my ex wife now, things would be so different because she would get a different version of me. And there could be a whole different relationship. A hundred percent. Yeah, that's why I, I mean I really, it, you know, you can't you can't turn back time, but I really like young people. I'm like, man, just grow. Let yourself invest in yourself. Don't worry about you know being twenty, you know, nineteen and getting married. Like really invest in yourself because if you invest in yourself first and your growth, you know, when you do meet that person, it will be a completely different relationship. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, it'll be a completely different person that you attract. Absolutely. hundred percent. And that's kind of my mission. Like, like right now I'm really on a mission to, to serve and, and I want, I want to help. Yeah. Um, because there's not enough voices and not enough men standing up saying we, the first thing is we have, I got to be the one to say, dude, we're messed up. Yeah. As a generation of men, we're screwed up. Women are crushing it right now, and men aren't. You want to know a secret? Women are just sitting around waiting for men to get their shit together. <laughs> Bro, I can't even tell you how many women have actually said that to me. I'm not saying this because I'm making it up. I'm saying it because there's a whole pool of badass women that are waiting for badass dudes to show up. And when they show up, you're going to have badass, awesome lives. Like, that's just real talk. And that's coming from the women's side of things, not from me. Yeah. So it's like, if I could say it again, yo, men, like, show up. show up, because there's a bunch of women over here, like your dream women are over here waiting for you to get your shit together. And the ones that do have their dream woman that's sitting in the living room in the other room, show the fuck up. Show up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you're, if you're in a marriage and it's not great, then start showing up, start being a badass. Like, yeah. Give me a call. <laughs> 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 Give me a call. So, Let's work on your so stuff. Speaking you of that, know? where can they get you? Right now, the best place is is on Instagram. Perfect. I am Dustin Elliott. We have you tagged the lower thirds the, the, this whole video. Yeah, and I'm gonna. If, and if you're listening, then it's Dustin Elliott. Yeah, but I'm I'm really gonna start pushing and, and creating and building because the, the momentum is is huge and it's needed. And I only, think so too. As soon as I voices. saw, I don't know how you popped up in my feed. I think you commented on something on that on that quint, quintet, um, and. I think you I think you commented something and I saw it and then I went to your profile and I saw that what you did and I was like, Oh, I've gotta to talk to this guy. That's cool. Yeah. That's cool, man. So that's how I think that's how that's how it happened. Jiu Jitsu. That's cool. And then boom, we're talking about yeah, heck yeah. relationship stuff. I'm grateful, man. So uh one of our sponsors, so we have a, cu- a couple sponsors for this podcast is Core Metal Group, which is is specifically helping men um on a hormonal level, be the best version of themselves. Be the, the yeah. version they, they were. I was actually, uh, um, I went on to TRT uh, shortly after the military. I had like a 190, so I felt like shit, mm-hmm. you know. And there's a lot of guys out there that probably feel like crap mm-hmm. and don't really know why, and they get their blood tested. And it's like, oh, you have the hormones of a female or a 75 year old male. Yeah. So Core Medical Group is a is a great um, group to look at. Um, also, none other than Johnny Slicks. Which this is is this all his? 
This is all his to take home. Okay, so we're going to do smell test right now. Wait, take home? Like, I get to have it? Yeah, yeah it's you're, yours. Yeah, you're yours. Oh, man. Yeah. So, I need you to open these things on camera and, and smell them. Smell them. Yeah. Get each, your sniffer Each one out. of them? How old are you again? You're at my age. 38. You're yeah, 38. I'm 38. So, um... I got them all a sampling of different things. There we go. So, just crack one. Go with the... Uh, smart. He doesn't have any hair, so you, he yeah. got... I don't got have hair. You actually... Sh- looks like you shave it. I do, but if, if like if I let it come out, it wouldn't look cool. So, <laughs> so you got to shave it. Yeah, well, bald and bearded baby. Well, that's sh- that's shave soap. So uh, oh cool, heck yeah. So open so that. open this one first. Yeah, yeah. So these are all just smell tests, is what I'm doing right yeah, now. Yeah, your smell test, just to see what I. Yeah. What. Bomb, I like it. Now does that's he, original. No, that's rugged. Oh, is it? Okay, I got him a bunch. So of each. okay, so this is this is gonna be interesting. I like right. a lot. You like that a lot. I do. Okay, you like that smell. Mm-hmm. All right. Lather's super great. You can use what use your hands. I don't what what do you lather your what do you shave your head with? Gillette, whatever the the Oh, once you see the Johnny Slick shave video and then I'm gonna send you the Gillette video, you're never gonna <laughs> use switching Gillette over. again. <laughs> you're switching over. Hey, I'll be honest, I'm in the market, man. I, w- I want my head to be, you know, on point. <laughs> so smooth. So that's that smell. Now smell this like one. It. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you something interesting. Okay. So you got that one. Yep. What is what is this? I mean, what is this one? Pomade. I got him that for his beard. If yeah, you to all this goes in yeah. my, my face. I'm gonna need a whole tutorial. I've never really groomed my, my face. So out of the two, you prefer which smell? Oh gosh, I got a pick. Can I now that I've smelled this one? Can I smell that one again? Yeah, because this one like took me to like a tropical island or something. Really? What yeah. is it? Maybe it's mislabeled. I don't know. It, it like no. Okay. No, that's, that's original. It's yeah, coconut. Yeah, see, it? coconut. Oh, yeah, coconut. Island. But we have a we have a different one called Paradise, oh, and that's that, and that smells that smells like a like a starburst. Oh, that's my favorite candy. We'll have to get you some Paradise too. So I have to. Which one I like better? Which smell do you prefer? If you only had to pick one, you're gonna die. You had to pick one to save your life. <laughs> oh gosh. Mm. This one to me is a little bit more like rug, like like um, it's tougher. Yeah, it's a little bit more like manly. This one's a little bit more um, fruity. I would, dang, that's a tough question. I would choose this one. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you're over thirty years old, you buy rugged. That's what you do. <laughs> Um, and if you're under 30, you go with original because, well, you're just not there yet. But that's okay. <laughs> Original's great. <laughs> this is gr- they're both that's they're, that's they're both they're great. both amazing. But what that's- we've seen over the years is mm-hmm. if you're over 30 years old, men gravitate towards the rugged scent, and if you're on the black label, the Omega scent, mm-hmm. and if you're under 30, you gravitate yeah, the- towards original and Omega. I got nervous. I got nervous there. <laughs> Oh, you thought I was going to choose I was the like, one? I was like, man, he's going to break the algorithm. Bro, I was so close. It was like 51 <laughs> to 49. It was so close. But guys typically prefer, so with the, with the, that's, so that's pomade. It's hair pomade, but I actually put it, you can, what can you do is you beard. do, you do, uh, like get out of the shower, you do the beard oil, um, brush that in. And then you know how like your beard like can get like, yeah, it gets curly. Yeah. It gets yeah. like curly like that. Yeah. The, well, the pomade will actually put a little bit in there and it just kind of shapes it. Pulls it down. Yeah. straight. Cool. Yeah. Heck yeah. And it's good. And then we've got, let's see. Oh, here's the alpha body wash. So this is the under 30. Um, yeah. Select smell choice. that. Smell that. Sometimes That's, everybody's different, man. It's like honey. Is that honey? I don't know. What's on the, What's I on the ingredients? Remember. No, the fragrance isn't on there, so I don't know exactly what he put in the alpha. I'd have to look it up. I don't know. Um, no, there's no honey in there. Maybe, maybe my sniffer's broken after smelling those ones so much. This, smell, this one smells great, too. But then we have Omega, which is typically, you know, yeah. This is awesome, man. Thank you. This is, yeah. this is super cool. Super. So super all cool. organic, 100% organic. I love it. Like American-made, American-sourced. So then so, is there a, is there like, how do you, how would I refill this box if I wanted to refill it? You got to go to giantslicks.com. Do you guys do like a, do you guys do like a monthly subscription? Like We're a working subscription on that. thing? We're working on it. So we actually manufacture everything in house. So we, we, um, manufacture and fulfill everything in house. That's really cool. Yeah. How long is, how long has these products been created in almost three years? three years? Yeah. Was it a crazy process? Like creating these uh that's not me that's johnny he's the mad scientist the scientist yeah 
I've always been curious how this kind of stuff gets made from scratch. It seems so cool. You it's, have to you have to go check out the lab. You have to check out the lab and the video. Like, like we got videos like of bubbling stuff. glasses. Oh man! With like all man, yeah. Smoke and yeah, it looks like a meth lab in there. But <laughs> this, we're making grooming products. I you love know. it. That's cool. Yeah, super cool. Yeah, we started with uh, we started with three, and then now we've got thirty something different products. Yeah, thirty something. Wow. Yeah. Growing fast. Growing super fast, man. Who, super fast. Who's your like target? Is it just like guys with beards or is it no. is it like men? Men, men who care about like actual the the help because there's no artificial anything in it. It's n- no fillers, no alcohol. The things that typically make like your hair break or fall out or itch or anything like that, you're going to get an all organic yeah. experience with like nothing but the best on your body. Yeah. So it helps with eliminating any sort of things that would affect your hormones or toxins and you know anything like, like that. We get, we're exposed to so many like xeno uh, xenoestrogens and all the shit that's like causing men's as you know get into other podcasts like their taints to shrink yeah you heard yeah, about yeah. That? yeah 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 so uh so you know we we are a big component of hey let's remove the chemicals from our bodies and our brains and let's be again it goes back to being the best version of yourself well yep. that that's in all areas mm-hmm. you know what i mean physical fitness 100 fighting mind and then the stuff that we eat and the stuff that we put on our bodies yeah so that's what it's, johnny's really you know passionate about that kind of stuff yeah it's i think it's really cool and i think it's funny because i'm kind of in a season of life you were asking me like what do you do next yeah right well like now i'm like newly single whether i warranted and wanted it or not but so I you want to smell nice so i'm excited yeah honestly like i'm yeah. kind of embracing it. like all right yeah. well now i'm like 38 like i'm a successful dude like i gotta like show up differently right, right. so now i'm getting it takes a little more effort than than 28 bro. <laughs> bro yeah but but it's it is still to that it's like being manly is taking care of yourself taking care of your skin taking care of your hair your beard showing up in every area of your life you know what i mean Damn, and even dude. i'm still learning that's where we end it right there well <laughs> dustin elliott everybody thanks for joining this uh podcast um leave us a review Screenshot this, tag us, share this with a friend. They definitely, we all have friends that need to hear this 100%. Um, And we'll see you guys. Go follow him, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.